Hey. What's cracking, fam? What's up? What's up? What's good? Y'all ready? I'm ready. That's right. All right. Yeah, my bad. What's going on, fellas? My mic was muted. Thank you, everybody, for joining in uh, for another wonderful week of great conversation, great dialogue. Uh, we appreciate all the feedback so far. Um, we did have uh, a little meeting with ourselves because I understand that uh, we are having you guys too late out here at night. I know you guys have been hanging with us, so we're definitely tightening that up. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, we're implementing some things back that we should have and we've gotten away from. So I just wanted to lay that out because next week is a definite, you'll definitely see the structure of the layout next week. Um, so we'll make sure that we're more time uh, time savvy tonight versus what we were in the past. Um, so just bear with us. Like I say, uh, we get so much feedback. Everybody's enjoying it. The platform is growing. We're learning how to make sure that everybody um, can join us on this journey and not feel like they're being lost in the sauce. So with that being said, fellas, how y'all doing so far? Good, man. Ready. Yeah. Feeling great. Feeling good. good All right. So, we, so tonight's, tonight's show is uh, emotional maturity. Uh, I know a lot of people have hit me up and said they didn't really understand emotional maturity, which is good because the platform that we have created for you is for you to understand the different dynamics of social skills and also skills that will benefit you in relationships because this is manifestations. We're trying to overall collectively have a better relationship between men and women and men in society as a whole, making better men. And in the process of that, we're going to touch in different enclaves of situations and points of your life that we can make and transition you from okay to better or better to, to great. Um, everybody can take a, a, a page out of their own book and find areas in their lives that they can go and basically improve throughout the uh, throughout yourself. Everybody is not uh, exempt from self-improvement. I try to make myself better every day. That's my goal every time I wake up. How do I make myself better than the the previous day before. Um, a lot of people have seen that improvement and have pointed that out. That's good because if they can recognize what I'm doing, that means it's showing, it's reflecting into the world. And that's what you want to do. You want to be a person that goes around and people say, yo, I see your growth. I see you changing. I see you prospering. That's always a great thing when you get other people to recognize it because you can have uh, self gloat and you can also have self recognition but it's better when other people tell you versus what you see, because sometimes you might be so blinded by what you think that the reflection of what you give off is something totally different. So we want to make sure that everybody uh, can look in the mirror and also um, what they see is also what they give off in the real world. When you step outside of your, uh, you step outside of your doors and enter the reality of the world. And when people, come across you, they can say, yo, I feel your energy, I feel your glow. A lot of times when people say that, it's always in a great, great manner because if they don't feel your glow in a positive way, then they'll be, uh, yeah, hold on, I'll be right back. And then you don't see them again because people run away from people with bad energy, bad persona, because if you're a person that wants to grow, you don't want to surround yourself with any of that. And they always say, surround yourself with people that you want to be like or surround yourself with people that represent you. I remember my dad always told me from day one, he says, he said, tell me what you are. He said, tell me about yourself. I said, um, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, and that. He said, no, you want to tell me about yourself? Go get your friends. I'll tell you who you are based on who your friends are. And I never understood that concept when my father was telling me. But as I grew older, we had that dialogue, and I appreciate him telling me that because he understands no matter how great of a man you are, if you're surrounded by a bunch of foolery and buffoons, you will be the buffoon as well. If I'm surrounded by a bunch of dudes who's out here not doing their stuff, not stand up dudes, they got a bunch of children they don't take care of, and I am the opposite guy, guess what? I'm labeled as my friends. And if I'm not a person who is trying to make them better, 
if I'm not trying to escape from around them and surround my fellow friends that are like me, then guess what? I'm an enabler. I'm just yep. as bad as the guys that I'm surrounded by, right? So we got to make sure that your circle, when we talk about your circle, sometimes your circle, when people say their circles grow smaller, that means they're shedding a lot of the fat, meaning that unwasted meat in the potatoes of the bulk, right? So a lot of times people's circles get smaller when they start growing, when they start flourishing. And that's not something to uh, hold your head down with. That's something you should take pride in because i rather 10 people that's great around me than have a uh, 100 people that ain't nothing and ain't shit to me you know what i'm saying it's not about the numbers it's about the quality that you have that's surrounding you because those 10 people are going to be my fierce line of defense whenever i tackle anything if i'm in a financial uh state of mind where i am basically not up to my financial part i have 10 people around me that would be make sure that I'm financially straight until I get back on my feet, you know, mm -hmm. uh, versus a hundred people that come to the table, want to eat down everything, drink up all the, and when the bill comes, then everybody's scratching their head or playing like they got somewhere to go. There's a difference of the people you surround yourself with. So make sure you understand that. And, um, that's what we do here on this platform is to strengthen you up better than you came in before this program was aired. So, with that being said, I know, uh, Major, you had brought this particular topic up to your um, on the list of something you wanted to speak about. So I definitely want to uh, turn it over to you and you can uh, basically explain to the people a little bit more on uh, emotional maturity. I mean, it's really a self-explanatory term you know um it's just that being emotionally mature being an adult at all times um using you know critical thinking skills and not letting your emotions get the best of you you know what i mean not overreacting you know remaining constant meaning calm thinking through matter bringing in counsel so we need to be, you know, who, who you're saying, you know, we you know you bring in encounter need to, and you, it's really about, you know, understanding yourself, uh, keeping your emotions at bay and really having control, uh, of your emotions overall. You know what I mean? Um, we see examples every day day of people who lack this you know and it, it it really comes out when there's some type of conflict you know what i mean you can tell who has emotional maturity best when there's something whereas you know conflict is being expressed difference of opinion is being expressed you know the people who jump out the window and resort to sign language you know what I mean? Those are the people who do not have emotional maturity, have not mastered emotional maturity. And, you know, they, they often have, you know, very troubled lives because of the fact that they're unable to control their emotions. Their emotions cause them to do irrational things that put them behind the eight ball. You know, they put them in a, in a situation where they're not going to thrive or it's less likely that they'll thrive it's less likely that they'll thrive because you know they have all these distractions that they don't know how to manage you know what i mean and so mm -hmm. it, it becomes it gets to the point where you know emotional maturity is just is, is an extraordinarily important thing if we're going to ever get to the place where we want to get as adults if we want to accomplish our goal you know every time something happens you just kind of jump out the window i was just watching you know um the sean taylor story with my wife, you know and you know it's very tragic what happened with sean but you know mm -hmm. when you look back over his life you could just tell you know he's very emotionally immature and and you know he didn't have the proper balance and it caused him to zig when he should have zagged a lot of times you know what i mean and yeah. you know you we really have to be on top of these things you know as far as self-governance and um how we how we manage ourselves and how we comport ourselves 
particularly when we're in a setting, like I said, when there's when there's conflict, when there's difference of opinion, when someone else is on is on the other side of how we feel, you know, we need to re refrain from, you know, going to oh you hate me or you know oh you're this or oh you're that, calling people names and not addressing the situation. You know, right. people who are mature they don't move that way. They get things solved, you know, and they're, they're much more uh, straight and narrow in the way that they move. So that, that was my, my thing with emotional maturity. We're severely lacking in that in the community, by the way. <clears throat> okay. Speaking. Definitely. So I definitely want to show everybody uh, the, the definition through the Google, which is what is emotional maturity? Emotional maturity means having the self-control to manage your emotions and to work to understand them. As an emotionally mature individual, you don't view emotions as a weakness. Instead, you value them and don't try to hide them. So that's just the basic consensus of emotional so, maturity. So um, there's different things that people um, can identify with emotional maturity um, and how to go about it. I definitely want to um, get um, Bobby Drake's uh, opinion on, I want to say Bobby Drake's take on emotional maturity. What do you uh, think emotional maturity is and how do you feel like you come across it? What is the, um, the necessity of understanding emotional maturity, especially from a man dealing with a woman or even emotional maturity with your own friends and family members? How important is that? So I did take it upon myself to do some level of research, at least, because um, I definitely had my own understanding of emotional maturity. But then it dawned on me that, um, you know, I'm not the only person in the world. So maybe there's different thoughts, different trains of um, philosophy regarding this whole concept of emotional maturity. Uh, because really, it's not a term, I believe, that's been around for very long. It's not like one of these um, old philosophies, or at least if it has been, it's only really recently, I'd say in the last decade, really come back into the um, the, the speech and the lexicon and the understanding um, where people were able to understand that this is a thing and it's something that I'm um, to worked on, developed and held and everything. Mm -hmm. So based on my research, I kind of didn't want to, because there's a huge tunnel you can go down. I mean, you could really get lost down the rabbit hole if you're not careful. So I just kind of read some different things, saw some different things that kind of pieced here and there from what I saw. So the basics of what I saw was basically emotional maturity really boils down to what is your characteristic way of responding? What is your response? So uh, like Major touched on, when things are less than 100% perfect, if there's any conflict, if there's any issue, any sort of disturbance in the force, so to speak, yeah. what is your habitual? Because, you know, we're human beings at the end of the day, um, none of us are sages, none of us have perfect mastery of our emotions, so even the best of us, even the most emotionally mature of us is going to have uh, times and moments where we don't respond the way we should. But mm -hmm. overall, what is your habitual characteristic way of responding? If somebody had to go ahead and make a bet, put their mortgage, put their trust fund money, put their kids' college fund tuition, and bet on how you're going to respond, yeah. what would be the sound, safe, smart, high percentage bet? So typically, if you have low emotional maturity, you're very low emotional maturity, what I was able to glean is you can basically sum it up in one, or, one of three things or more of those three things. So the first thing is going to be sulking. So that's basically, you know, something goes wrong, someone says something you don't like, someone, um, um, maybe they forget an anniversary or they owe you something, they're supposed to do something, they promise they're going to do X, Y, Z, they didn't come through, they forgot or whatever. Instead of opening your mouth and talking to them and bringing it up to them, you're just going to sulk. Now, anytime you see them, you know, you don't say anything. You just, mm, hey, what's up? Mm. Like, what's wrong with you? Don't worry about it. Yeah. But what's the matter? No, 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 no. Why don't you go do that? Obviously, something is wrong, but they're not being an adult and communicating. So instead, they want you to just be psychic. They want you to be... Uh, Professor freaking Charles Xavier the X-Men and just use your psychic powers to read their mind and see what's going on all this nonsense and cool, that's not the case. Mm. Big indicator of emotional immaturity. The second indicator of the immaturity is 
uh, becoming furious. So we're not talking about getting upset or getting mad or even getting angry. We're talking about getting extremely and most importantly, disproportionately angry. Mm. So someone misses and bumps into you in line or something, regardless of whether they say, I'm sorry or not, or maybe they don't even realize it. Instead of being like, hey, Mickey, watch where you're going. More like, mother, who the fuck? You think you could bump into me? Like, damn, damn, bro, I just, <laughs> my bad. Just, we swapped a couple skin sets. I didn't know it was that deep. My bad. But they just flying off the handle. They jumping out the window. They just on 10 or even 8 or 9, and it doesn't call for that. So given the situation, they're angry and upset on a level that really isn't gelling with where they currently are. They take something to the next level and doesn't need to go there. And the third um, sign is just becoming cold and just, you know, basically shutting down, putting up indifference, putting up walls and barriers, uh, really shutting themselves off from their emotions, not allowing themselves to feel because uh, they don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be hurt again. They, especially they wrapped up um, damage and trauma over time. Rather than opening themselves up and being vulnerable and allowing themselves to feel all the good and all the bad that comes with it, or basically allowing themselves to live because that's part of being human it's experiencing these emotions they just mm. shut and wall all that off mm. on the flip side the three indicators that i saw that indicate uh positive and strong emotional maturity is um and you'll see that these are probably counter to um three that i just named before first is communication or your capacity to explain so if there is an issue there's something that's going on if you feel a certain way it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative it's your ability to effectively communicate these things to the other person or other people. So rather than just having the thing sitting in your chest, you're not just saying, I feel this way, but you're able to get into it, elaborate, say why you feel the way, what happened. You're basically able to understand yourself in that regard. So that calls for not just being able to open your mouth and talk, but there's some awareness as well too. You're able to understand what you're feeling, get in touch with that, really dig deeper, and not just sit there with it, but actually be able to explore it a little bit and understand what you're feeling exactly, why you're feeling that way, what might have led up to that. Um, if it's a trigger that you have, being able to maybe divulge that other people so they're aware they know not to go ahead and um, you know, step on that, or at least if they do, you have a better indication this person just doesn't care. They're trying to trigger you on purpose. But that calls for being able to understand. So there's the self-communication, and then there's the communication with other people. The second is being able to stay calm. So being rational, being logical, not easily rattled. If something is popping off, if it's getting really dicey, you know, you still there cool as a cucumber. You just, you know, cool, calm, collected. You just, you know, you in your bag and you just feeling for it. So you're not reacting before thinking first. You're thinking, you're being proactive. You're making moves that you've thought about, that you prepared for as opposed to just knee jerk stuff um you know you're seeking to understand so again before you just jump to conclusions you want to really get down did i really see this did i really hear this did i really understand this the way i think i did let me ask questions let me just confirm that i got this right instead of just running with something yeah right so staying yeah. calm and then being vulnerable so that's being strong enough and comfortable enough internally to create relationships, you don't shy from relationships or friendships or whatever because you're afraid someone's going to hurt you. You understand that that's a risk that comes with it, and you don't back down from that. You know, you're feeling strong enough emotionally, internally, where you're able to make those risks. You're also able to seek help when and where it's necessary. Um, I would also probably add to that from what I saw as well. I didn't really see it included, but part of that, I think, would also be doing your due diligence and making sure that you're not just going ahead and just dumping on other people who, A, are not in a space where they can receive what you're giving them. So if you have people who are, you know, overburdened themselves, you're not going and vomiting on them when they have their own stuff to deal with. But you're also making sure that you're going to something that can actually help you or you can actually get a resolution. So venting is cool, but if you just vent, if there's an issue that's behind it and you're just venting, ultimately that becomes just, mental masturbation so you just you get it off you you bust off feels great but 5 10 15 20 minutes later a day later whatever the issue right back it didn't go anywhere mm -hmm. so you just went through all that for no reason as opposed to actually seeking out people or seeking out methods to solve and resolve the issue where it's done and dead for good so once you bust 
That's it. You ain't go back. You don't have to go back to it. So that's what I basically got the understanding of um, in my travel. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more plain to others. And I think there's probably some room to um, wiggle with. There might be some other things that can be added to that. Um, I don't think anything really needs to be taken out, but I believe that's subjective. But ultimately, it's really having a mastery or at least a working mastery of your emotions and really being settled. You're not easily jarred or rattled. You're, you're, you're a stable person. You're a whole person. Mm-hmm. And consistent. Real talk. Nice. Consistent. Yeah, it's big. It's great, big. Definitely. Great points. It's, it's uh, you it's said meaningful. a lot. A lot. And, um, you know, just the self reflection and self accountability also uh, with emotional maturity uh, is very impactful whenever you're dealing with, uh, or I should say, in the realms of systematical racism, even with. Um, you're dealing with a Karen or a Ken, right? Mm-hmm. As much as you want to be emotionally engaged with them, there's a level of maturity that causes you to be strategic when dealing with them. Because sometimes um, I always tell this to children, young, uh, young adults, um, even adults, whenever you engage with some of these race soldiers out here, what they do is they do a tactic that is very well known and the tactic that a lot of police officers use is when they encounter you they become hostile they become the bully and what they do is they want you to react on them because once you react on that now i don't care what you did now you're battering a police officer so now it's you're endangering a police officer you're attacking a police officer that's the charge that they will put on you Mm-hmm. Right. And a lot of times, a lot of our people become victims of that because um, the bully will always bully somebody. But when the bully gets bullied back, the bully turns into a victim. So that's how it is. Police officers will bully you and they will bully you to get a reaction, the hostile to get that reaction. Mm-hmm. And once they get that reaction, now they can play victim. So you'll hear a lot of times on the uh, police audio and radio is they'll say, oh, uh, stop resisting, stop resisting. Mm -hmm. So you are bullying me. And then when I react to it, now I'm resisting whatever it is that you consider to be resisting your command or in your space. So now I have that on now they have that on audio. When I go to court, people are not going to understand the dynamics, but they hear the audio. And what they hear is the bully becoming the victim saying, stop resisting, stop resisting. Right. So basically on audio, it sounds like they're trying everything to do to calm me down, but they never yeah. hear the part where he raced up and bullied me. You know, mm-hmm. it's very funny how they use and clip bait people into that. But I tell uh, young adults and even adults, you got to be very cautious about that. That's where emotional intelligence and emotional maturity comes in at because it can save your life. A lot yes. of times I've watched a lot of mature, emotionally mature men get themselves not only out of a situation with an officer that was very erratic with them, but also check the officer and put the officer in his place to the point where the officer now is backing down and cowering down because that man has now put that officer in a in a predicament in a chess move where if he makes the wrong move is checkmate on that black man and that's the type of intelligence and maturity that you need understanding who your opponent is understanding that keeping a calm and level head will get you much further and being strategic about it because everybody out here will are not uh, emotionally mature or don't have emotional intelligence. And that's why you see a lot of these cops get owned by people who understand the law more than them because a lot of these cops are really not out here um, programmed or even instilled with the correct information of the law. Some of them are just get uh, the badge and then they get thrown on the streets and what they do is they, you know, they're bullies. They were always bullies 
most of them were bullies when they were, uh, you know, regular uh, civilians. And now they got the badge. And now some of that bulliness turns into ego. And a lot of times yeah. they think because they have the badge that they're always in the right. But if you know the law and you keep your level head and your maturity, emotional maturity, you not only get out of that situation, but now you put that cop in a situation where either he's going to get locked up, you're going to sue the, the state, or that cop is going to lose his job. Or it might be all three. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important that emotional maturity is uh, basically uh, achieved because it can help you in all aspects of life. I know tonight we're supposed to talk about the relationship, but I just want to show you how powerful that something that is minute can also elevate you in different parts of the life and even save your life in the long run. So hopefully this information you can now adapt and control, and then that way you can go ahead and proceed it on to your, your children as well. I know, um, shout out to Natasha, shout out to our brother Lowell in the chat. Um, Natasha did write a couple of uh, comments that I wanted to share. Um, what are some of the things you get you need, okay, what are some of the things you get you needed to improve on, right? So what are some of the things that I guess I needed to improve or we needed to improve on? Um, well, I can go and say that um, one of the things that I had to improve on was um, mastering um, how to read somebody so that way I know how to flow with them. It's kind of like um, tango, right? So you got tango is basically a dance that really requires both of you guys to be on the same level and movement because in tango, I have to trust you to dip me. I have to trust you to turn me. So when you're uh, basically um, reading each other, you will understand the dance and the flow a little bit better. So in order for us to have this choreography that is so great in life, it takes the movement of both of us. I have to give you control. You have to give me control. We dance back and forth like that. That is how we roll as a unit. So I had to master that because sometimes when you ask a man to lead you, and this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Um, a lot of women, you know, everybody just runs with terms and terminology. And women will run around here and say, I want a man to lead. I want a man to lead. But that leadership role, it, it varies with different men, right? Or, and it varies with what does a woman feel like that leadership is good enough for her. So a lot of times some women will say, I need a leader to lead me, but they don't want to, they don't want no say in it. They just want you to go and lead them. And a lot of times when you do that, uh, you overpower her as well. Even though she might want to say something, she feels like the leadership is only should be fall under a man, right? And in that process and in that moment, because she don't say anything, I could fall in my leadership because I'm not leading you the way you feel like I should lead you. And you're sitting back not saying anything and you're mm -hmm. allowing both of us to cripple each other. And that's how sometimes these relationships fall out because it's the same way as, you know, a lot of women, uh, a lot of guys feel like because they're good in bed, they can go out there and satisfy every woman, but that's not the case. You have to know what woman you're dealing with to know what level level of satisfaction you give. You could have the best steel out there for these women, but some women, no matter how good your sex is, if they don't connect with you mentally, they won't have a good sexual experience with you. If there's some women that have to be in love with you in order to feel you that way, um, some women, different positions or whatever, uh, you have to go outside of the box. So every woman, has their level of satisfaction. And with leadership, it's the same way. You have to let me know, like, in what areas is my should my leadership go without it being too much for you? I think the constructiveness of leadership should be a little bit of a balance of how do you want me to lead you? 
once I know how you want somebody to lead you, I can lead you that way. So I had to understand and read people and understand what it is that that woman needed for me and how she needed me to lead her. Um, I think sometimes we feel like, you know, our leadership in one relationship is pretty dope, but we take that same leadership in another relationship and it fails, you know? Mm. So everybody got to understand you have to deal with your mate according to how that is. And um, I had to learn that. I had to learn how to read. I had to learn how to understand. I had to learn to take in constructive criticism in order for us to prosper in that area and field. And even if you have a failed relationship, um, just gaining the knowledge helps you to be better in the next one. So always take things um I never, I had to learn to never look at relationships as a total failure and look at it as a lesson to move forward into the next relationship and build that up to where it improved in that area. Um, I also had to learn how to um, take back, well, I wouldn't say take back, but I had to learn how to be uh, conscious enough not to say certain things based on the level of how uh, a woman would take it. So there's, you can get the message across to a woman, but some people um, don't take the message as effective because of everybody learns different, right? So even with um, like, you have children out here and a lot of times people think children are failure because they don't perform well in school. But that same child you have in your living room, he's building up all your furniture and he's doing that off of one sheet or sometimes just looking at a box. I've watched children look at a box and create a whole living room, right? And you say to yourself, in the school, you're a failure. Like you're looking at it because they're curriculum. He's not coming home with the same grades. But then outside of it, he's so intellectual. He knows how to maneuver the computer better than you. You know, he's very sex, uh, tech savvy and stuff like that. It's the same thing with relationships. you got to know who you're dealing with. Some people are book smart. Some people are just uh, technically smart, right? So you have a lot of students that can excel in the books, but when you show them how to do it, they don't really understand it. Then you have some children that um, don't fail in the books, but then, in other words, they technically, man, they could do a lot. So you have to understand uh, who you're dealing with and what uh, level of, um, of of strengths that they have. And when you know that level of strengths and weaknesses, you can therefore uh, build with that person. So that way you don't end up, um, you don't end up making the message go over the head or being taken in the wrong way. You got to know how to feed that person that you're with. Um, you know, and I've learned that and learned that in a good way, you know what I'm saying? So um, I changed in that way as well. And there's other aspects that I've changed in, but I, I'll let you guys uh, give off a couple of what you had changed in. So we could go with you, Major. What what things have you changed in uh, that made that you improved on? Oh, man, it's a lot. It's a lot, bro. I used to be, when I was a kid, I used to be a little hothead, man. You know what I mean? Like, I used to really... I used to bring the pressure, you know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up in Brown Sub out here. I moved to Cali. I was in the Bay Area. You know, I, I'm talking about early 90s, late 80s, early 90s Bay Area. You know how, you know the scene, you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. that didn't help much, you know, uh, in terms of calming me down. But what did help, you know, was seeing a lot of my friends get killed. You know what I mean? Um, even just recently, I lost a homie out west. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, he was, he was one of those guys. You know, he was kind of, you know, he calmed down a lot in his older age, but, he, you know, he was a hothead when he was younger, too. And, you know, when you start to see these things up close, you know, I've lost a lot of friends. You know what I mean? Um, Charlie Brown, I lost him. Some people call him C-Murder. I lost him back in the days. Power, I lost him. You know, either to jail or, you know, to gun violence or something like that. And when you start to see it, it becomes so real. You know, it's right in your face. You know, your friends get murked. 
here and there, you know, sometimes, you know, you see your friends get killed over, you know, silly gangbang shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, okay, this hothead shit is not very practical. You know what I mean? You figure out real quick, it's, it's not, you know, the retirement plan for being a hothead, it ain't one that you want to really, you know, um, end up in. So, you know, from that, you know, and just from other things, you know, I, I told, I talked one time on, you know, this show about one time I was in the back of a police car and the cops saw me like, I know your mama, go home, boy. You know what I mean? When you start to see that type of stuff up close and it's like, damn, that was almost me. I was almost a statistic. You really reel yourself in and you look at things differently. I've had attempts made on my life. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, when you get there, you it check it, it's a reality check that you can't avoid because it just hits you upside the head. You can't you can't you can't run from it. So yeah. you know, I learned one of the things that I learned is that cooler heads prevail. You know, yeah. things through. You might be hot in the moment, you know, or whatever the case may be. But when you think it through, it's going to bring you to a better place. It's going to lead you to a more productive outcome. You know. Um, and above and beyond that, to speak back to something that you said earlier, emotional maturity mm-hmm. greatly impacts the type of people that you keep around you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we talked about. When you become, when you get to that, you know, point of emotional maturity in your life, you're not going to have knuckleheads around you. Even some people that I know and I respect a great deal. I look at some of the people around them. I'm like, man, ready. You know what I'm saying? You you just ain't you just not ready. You you have all these toxic people around you, you know, and, and you, you're an intelligent person eating well, but you got all these kids around and you see mm-hmm. firsthand how that takes away from people. And you know, when you really get to that point where you're deadly serious about life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't have no no bullshit people. You you make sure everybody yeah. around you is solid. That's very right. that that's a, a huge part of emotional maturity, and you know uh, um, also just knowing how to reel yourself in. You know um, sometimes I, I I you know you know what I mean I learned how to be be very intentional about things that I said in the other way. You know, just go to um, being, it's a really, really big deal. You know, um, that denotes emotional maturity more so than anything and, and just live your rules and guidelines that you don't you don't really stray from you know what i mean having a personal code you know we speak as black folks all the time about being cold but individually you should have a certain code you know whereas there are certain things that you just won't do you know what i mean yeah certain things that you absolutely will do all the time you know what I mean? Dave Chappelle talked about that when he talked about the dress. You know what I mean? Um, and others, when they talk about things like that, having integrity, you know, being that type of person that you stand on your word 1,000% of the time. You know, these are important things. You know, th- th- there's nothing like that type of forthrightness and that type of character. You know, it's really a big deal and it makes you very influential, whether you know it or not. It makes you very, very influential and very much able to convey messages and bring others to a better place because they can see that you're doing it. You, you're not just talking. You know what I mean? You're doing it. You're living. It. You know, you are the Malcolm X of this thing. You know, and I use Malcolm specifically because even, you know, the feds, who were trying so hard to infiltrate Malcolm to get him to switch out. Even they said he was a boy scout. I mean, he, he lived it. They said he was real. So yeah, 
when your audience be saying that you're real, you the real deal. You know, that's how I try to move because it's imperative that we do so. We can't make foolish mistakes and screw up. So we must be, especially as black men, we must have our emotional maturity uh, in check. It's not an option. Yeah. Bobby? Definitely. Bobby? <laughs> So on my end of the spectrum, uh, definitely uh, similar to you, Major, uh, especially when I was uh, younger coming up, uh, had a nasty, wicked temper, um, really bad, quick to get it on um, with you. Um, the virtue that I had was that I was never um, a bully type. I was never someone that went looking for trouble like that. However, I just had a bad habit when I was a kid of trouble finding me. So I just be chilling, doing my own thing for the most part, and nonsense and BS or whatever comes along, and I was always his favorite uh, dartboard to go ahead and land some shots on. And so many times uh, I found myself in situations that I didn't necessarily go looking for, but I either didn't know how to or didn't get out of the way of. So it would be simple, basic things. Um, some instances it would even be that things other people were doing around me and they were fine, but I would be the one who got caught for it or whatever. And so, uh, when I was younger, especially I moved around a lot. Um, I probably been to several different just um, partly for behavior in that regard, but also for other reasons, but, um, probably before I even touched third grade, I had been to several different schools already. Um, and so, you know, but habitually being a new kid, um, in a lot of those situations, I was also um, one of the only, if not the only black um, kid in those situations. So I definitely had to deal with a lot of um, little white supremacist jerk off bullshit or whatever as well too. So, um, you know, the situations where it was like the kids were against me, the adults were against me, you know, it was just me and everybody else. And so, you know, that kind of stuff definitely didn't do much to kind of help temper that or whatever. So um, I would try and do the best I could to not get in trouble, to just bottle it up because, you know, I know what's going to happen if I lash out. I know what's going to be on me. No one's going to care about who threw the rock. They're just going to see the person that got hit by it and responded. So I had to do a whole lot of dancing back and forth with my emotions. And so that didn't put me in a very good place. Um, once I got to third grade, there was a bit of stability. I was able to finish out the school year in the same school. And I remember specifically, it meant so much to me. Um, when I got to middle school, I begged, my parents said, please, you know, I moved around a lot. I don't want to move. Can I, can I just start here and just finish it? Just that completion meant a whole bunch to me. It meant a lot to me. And so I thankfully had the opportunity to do that. But even still, you know, nonsense still keeps following sometimes. Um, I also have a theory, and I said that typically, um, you know, like anything else, certain a lot of behaviors good and bad we tend to wear them as um as skin sometimes and a lot of times people can both consciously and subconsciously pick up on certain things so for example um it's not an accident that people who tend to um who've been the victims of abuse they tend to go from one abusive situation to another not that they're necessarily looking for abuse but a lot of the things a lot of the things that should be maybe red flags or characteristics they either don't jump out of the person or the people who have those characteristics, they see the characteristics of someone who's been abused and they gravitate towards that. So I believe um, because I had, um, because I had been used to being bullied coming up, I believe I subconsciously gave off a lot of um, pick on the energy mm. that may be right for people um, trying to come through with me, whatever. So I had a lot of situations where people come at me and um you know i had done my best to just you know take it and just you know do it the most possible but it got to a point where um due to the policies they were like you know if you were in a fight it doesn't matter if you swing or throw back the automatic is suspending all parties involved and so i'd be right on the sidelines like okay so you know i was able to control my temper i didn't lash i didn't hit this person i'm still getting suspended what the hell it got to the point where one day my mother picked me up from school and she's like, look, I'm tired. She basically said in so many words, look, I'm tired of getting your ass beat. Um, I understand that you're not the one doing these things. If you're going to get suspended regardless, you need to start getting your hands dirty. 
So the minute I heard that, green light, the next time someone started, bop, 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 bop. I'm sending people to the clinic. I'm coming out looking sick. I'm suspended, but I'm not frowning as hard. You know, I, I'm taking them them five days and seven days and ten days, a lot cooler than before. Um, but I have had fun. It got to the point where that was good for defending myself, so I'm not getting as bad and bruised, but I'm still in a bad way. Ultimately, it got to a point where I had so many suspensions on my record that I was really at risk of getting expelled and getting kicked out because um, it was going to be a problem. So I had to find ways to channel my issues better, find ways to de-escalate the situation. And one of the things that helped both control my temper, but also to get me in a calmer state, get me in a place where I'm able to think and move differently was music. Mm. So um, I don't know. I think if first started with the songs. I didn't really get put on to um, hip hop and rap music like that um, until I bumped into um, one of my very good friends in sixth grade. He was bumping um, Lyricist Lounge Volume 2 in a CD player. I asked, I don't know what you're listening to, sounds good, can I hear it? And I listened to it and I heard um, Most Deaf, Feral Mosh, Nate Dogg, some other stuff. And I'm like, yo, I've never heard this before, this is amazing, whatever. And so from that point, I was just hungry. I was just digging for this stuff. And I stumbled onto a song that would end up being the most important song of my life. It literally changed the direction that I was on. And that was uh, Nas's One Mic. And so mm. I heard this song. I heard the lyrics. I even saw the music video back when the box was a thing. And just the way that song was arranged, the lyrics, even though, you know, I'm a kid, half these concepts he's talking about is going over my head. But just the way he's presenting, you know, he starts off, you know, real slow and, you know, methodical, but then as the song goes, he's building up, building up, and finally it explodes, you know, he's loud, he's boisterous, and then the chorus comes in, he's back down quiet again. Just hearing that did something where it allowed me to vent, so anytime I was upset, it would be my um, ritual, go by yourself, isolate yourself, put the song on, listen to it as many times as it took, and it was my way of self-regulating. Wow. So I was still young, I didn't have the means to regulate myself, so I had to find an alternative. So that's part of emotional maturity coming in. I'm recognized where my limitations are. I recognize I'm here, but for my own benefit, for my own survival, really, I need to be here. I can't get there by myself. So I found a means of doing that without realizing it. And so now mm -hmm. this is starting to get me to where I need to be. And this is when music started becoming really a huge part of my life. So I ended up getting into um, marching band in my school. We had a really good marching band program. And so now I'm in this activity that I really care about. I'm learning how to play music. So now I'm not just listening, but I'm also a creator of this thing that I care about. But it also gave me something to lose. So now I maybe wasn't as, you know, not getting suspended, not getting in trouble. It wasn't as big an issue for me personally. But I know when I'm taking these L's, I'm losing out. I can't be in band. I can't go on trips, whatever. So now this is giving me an incentive where I need to control myself now because if I don't, I'm going to take an L. I'm going to suffer. I'm not going to be able to do the thing that means the world to me. And so between those two things, I was able to get myself to a point where I was able to control myself and to lash out. And sure enough, once I started those two things, I went from getting to several fights during sixth grade year, got to seventh grade year, only got into a few fights. Eighth grade year came, only got into one fight. And that was the last time I ever actually had to put hands on somebody in that regard. The last time I was tested, but I passed, was in my freshman year of high school. And it was some um, sucker that I knew back in middle school. And he figured he was going to go ahead and try, you know, get some clout by messing with me. Mm. And in that moment, I did snap. I did almost go off. Um, but fortunately, I was in a position where I wasn't able to get free. at was a few people that had to restrain me. But just the ferocity that I gave off was so severe. Dude ran out of the classroom. Ain't come back the rest of um, class. And after that, I don't know if word mm. spread or what, but after that, nobody even so much as came in my way anymore. And so mm. I was able to overcome that. And that's when I learned the power of being able to self regulate your emotions, keeping yourself in check. So that self control aspect was big for me, mm. but specifically, know how to manage yourself so it doesn't get to that point. So I became very big on prevention and making sure that you're doing things and putting yourselves in positions to win. Mm. You know, so there's certain situations, certain places, um, and that's big for a lot of people because a lot of people, especially high profile folks, 
they get into bad situations, not necessarily because they're looking for, them, because they're in a place that um that um that is uh that's that's conducive towards that. Mm-hmm. I heard Fifty Cent on the interview saying, um, I think it was earlier today. He said, you know, for the most part, rich people don't go in star fights. You know, no matter where they are, they're at, um, they're at a club, they're at a party. You know, there's somebody that's chilling. They got the bottles with the people. They're enjoying themselves. They're trying to live good and trying to enjoy themselves. That most of the time, it's people who hate their life, who aren't doing well, that go and right. start stuff. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you always control that because sometimes, I mean, if you're out in Publix or whatever, you shop, or you're out in Walmart or something, and someone comes up. I mean, that's you can't do anything about that. Yeah. But for the most part. Knowing what situation you're going into, asking questions like, "Hey, we're getting together. Okay, cool. Uh, who else will be over there?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll set it out. Or just knowing certain places. If you know you you don't have good history at a certain location, or whatever, don't go yeah. to them spots. Don't do these things. If you know you have issues with drinking, you know you can't control your liquor, or whatever. You take one or two shots and you just lose it. Put the alcohol yeah. down. Don't touch the drugs. Don't. If you know you have impulse issues, in other words. Separate yourself from the difficulties. Put yourself in a yeah. position to win. Don't set yeah. yourself up for failure. Don't don't tempt the devil. Don't yes. do that. Oh, hey, um, such a very much so. I just wanted to say something real quick. When you said that about who's over there, I remember growing up when I was in my younger years, and I remember there was two guys, Alex and Richard. Richard is on my page. Um, Alex is on my Instagram page. Alex and Richard, if these two is going out with us, I ain't going. I am not going. Yeah. Dog, no these, dog, yeah. These, are, these are Chi-Chi and Chung dudes. These is the yin oh. yang. Like yeah. all yeah. like they're they're the they're like the, the devil's advocate in each other's ears. Like it's <laughs> like one, nope. Alex would be like, Alex is a short dude. I call him the Neo Complex dude. So he's always been the short dude out of all of us. So you already know <laughs> how that kicks in. I already know. Richard is pretty tall. Richard is up my my level. He's six foot. He's up, up my. And Alex would come around us and be like, man, this. And he'll swing his little arms and be like, man, this oh, nigga tried us, dog. Like, nah, dog, this shit. And here come Richard, dog. What you want to do, dog? Because I, I'll go over there and spark his ass. And then you hear, and Alex like, all right, let's go. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, fight breaks out. We got to go over there and rumble in the jungle. And I'm like, after a while, I started to notice the pattern. And then I'm like, yeah. look, I can't be doing that. Because, see, the thing about it is that we, we got to understand how Miami is. I think everybody understands where their area is. But y'all yeah. got to understand the jungles of Miami. And the jungles of Miami, you know, is it's rough. We wasn't known for gang banging. We're not down here where you got Crips and Bloods and nothing like that. But we have affiliated our own gangs, whether it's streets, right? You got the 73rd mm-hmm. and 71st. They beefing all up in the, in the projects together. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you two streets ahead. You two streets away from y'all. And yet y'all clicks is always killing somebody. Y'all, every week, this, uh, every episode is a, is a click member for one group on First 48. And the yeah, retaliation yep. was so severe down here, um, down in the Poking Beans, that it was really, really, they had to like, interv- they had to do some intervention down there to get that shit straight. But it was yeah. really that bad. Two streets away from each other, these dudes was at each other's throats of war zone. You know what I'm saying? And it's like... Yeah. When I was going out with these these guys, I had to realize like we're getting in beef with people they know, right? Because I'm from down, I'm from Maryland. I came down from Maryland. I came from New York, so I'm from up north. So I'm coming down here. I don't know a lot of the cats that they have beef with. So yeah. if I'm out here rumbling with them, I don't roll with them everywhere I go. So mm. it's easy for somebody to recognize me and catch me slipping. And make me an example because of who they are. You feel me? So that's yeah. why my dad, you know, it always resonated when my dad told me that. He was like, you know, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Because friends don't put friends in danger like that. It's one right. thing when you're right. defending yourself, but it's another thing for amping up something. You know what I'm saying? Because 
I remember a comedian said this, right? And one of my favorite skits, like his name was Dave Butler. And uh, Dave Butler was just on stage doing his thing. And then this lesbian woman was a heckler. And she tried to like crack jokes on him. So he said, all right, you know, and he ended up cracking jokes on him. And then she got mad. And then he said to her, he was like, how you get mad at me? You can't, you can't punch a guy and then a guy come and shoot you and you'd be like, yo, you overreacted. You, yeah. you can't do that. You yeah. can't judge how somebody gonna react. If you hit somebody, you can't stop somebody for how they're gonna take, what level they're gonna take it on. You feel me? Yeah. I can get in a fight with y'all and then next thing you know, dude blow my brains out and y'all gonna be like, oh man, that's too, you went too far. Like, why you do that to my boy? No, you don't know what level it escalate because you don't know the mindset of that other person. So, yeah. That's why I tell people like, yo, you know, a lot of times when situations occur, and that's when we went back, you know, remember Major? We went back to the whole stepping on my shoe in the club because yeah. years later, I had to emotionally be mature about certain situations. It was easily he stepped on my shoe. I could have elbowed him. I could have sparked him in the rib or something. Yeah, but I said yeah. to him, I took the approach like, let me try something different. And I said, damn, my bad, dog. And he looked at me and said, no, man, my bad. I stepped on your shoe. And then we was laughing, chuckling up. Next thing you know, we, we exchanging drinks at the bars. And then yeah. he gives me his business cards and we network. So it That's went from something that could have went all the way left to yeah. something that went just right. And it all couldn't right. end out perfect. You feel me? No, but it takes you the that. level of maturity. It takes experience to get to that level to understand yeah. that what I did in the past wasn't working for me and and that's why they always say learn from your mistakes because guess what if i didn't have that experience back then with with alex and, and um and richard yeah i wouldn't have got to that level of that maturity because i would have been like yo i would have popped off because i never got tired once you get tired of something you're always like nah something gotta do something gotta give so i would have never got to the level of of being tired to notice, like, let me do something different because that road will end up in, I'll end up in the casket. So if I never experienced all of that before, I wouldn't have got tired to the point where I'm trying something different, which ended up with a positive reaction. Had yeah. I not had that experience, I probably would have popped off and probably wouldn't even be on this podcast with y'all right now. Because either mm. I would have been in the casket or I would have been in jail, either or. It wouldn't have been a good ending. But it takes a level of maturity to understand that to switch the game up, to switch it up, just for the embetterment of yourself, and not even just the embetterment of yourself, but the embetterment of the community. Because at the end of the day, this black man is part of my community. This black man represents me because he represents what I look like, you know what I'm saying, when he walks down the street. So it's my extended brother. So now instead of fighting my extended brother, I'm having beers and sharing it up with him at the bar exchanging businesses prof like um uh promoting himself as well as prospering and flourishing on something more positive so i love that approach and I, I always took that and always looked at that example and i use that example to teach other children and other young adults that you don't have to take the exact same route whatever it is in your situation just think of the emotionally mature way of going about it so that way you guys don't become a statistic and everything flows because whenever somebody dies, whenever somebody goes to jail, families are affected forever, yeah. right? And now instead of two people um, being destroyed in this, now you got families. And depending on how big those families are is how big the destruction is. So, you know, it's very important that you use emotional maturity in all aspects of your life, because in the long run, it definitely will save you. Um, I, I, mean, I, 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 I thought, mean, real quick. yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, jump, jump in. Real quick, I, because I, I, I want to make sure I add this in. Yeah. Because I, we had a conversation the other day, and I made a post the other day, and you, mm -hmm. you, when you hit, you hit on something when you mentioned that this person is a part of my community, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted to make sure I interjected this. People yeah. always, a, a, a very important part 
of emotional maturity is understanding Ooh. how your actions affect the community and the collective. Yeah. Everything. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to pound this damn nail into the wall until it, it, it goes all the way in. You understand what I'm saying? Because people, this goes over people's heads. You know what I'm saying? People always asking this idiotic question when you comment on something. Mm -hmm. Well, why are you even worried about it? Well, why are you even talking about it? Well, why are you in, why are you all in a business? Let, let, let me let me educate you. Okay. We are always in that business and we're worried about it and we're talking about it because we understand that normalization of behavior becomes culture mm. and culture impacts everybody that's the long and short of it you say know, that so again say that again one more time one more time For normalization, normalization of certain behaviors becomes <coughs> excuse, excuse me sorry becomes culture and culture impacts everybody Mm. You understand? So when you see us commenting on things and and going in on things and you don't think it's a big deal, we're looking at the big picture. Because if you continue to allow this behavior and allow this behavior and allow this behavior to the point where it's become where it becomes normalized, then you look up one day and it's the culture. Mm. Yeah, it, it started off very small. But now it is the culture. It is what we do. It is what we accept. It is how we move. You understand? Mm. And now it's impacting everybody. Now you got men with wigs on winning women's trophies for competing in women's sports. You think that happened overnight? Mm. No. Nope. It started somewhere. You didn't say nothing. You understand what I'm saying? It started somewhere you didn't say nothing, and it got worse, and it got worse, and now it's the culture. Correct. You understand what I'm saying? You got a generation of young people that think it's the cool shit to be to be a dope boy, and it's the cool shit to be if you're a boy, if you're a male, and it's the cool shit to be to be a, a sex worker or, you know, a, a stripper or what, what have you if you're a girl. That didn't happen by accident. You know, back in the days, sisters used to be the ones who used to fight the hardest against, you know, certain type of imagery of them. Now, that's supposedly empowering. Yeah. Back in the day, I'm, I can remember back in the day, hip hop, I remember Rock Kim said on one of his songs, selling drugs is for handicaps. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I remember that. Now you got a whole genre within the genre of hip hop called trap music. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And our kids right. look up to the image of the dope boy and of the stripper as like some place that they should aspire to be. And yeah. I blame that on us because yep. we let it get there. You understand what I'm saying? When you see certain types of behaviors and people fly out the window and they get crazy, you know, people say what they want to say about the J, the J community, but they don't yeah. allow people to talk about them any old kind of nope. way. They don't allow people on television or in music or anywhere else to portray them any kind of way because they know that they know where that goes. They know how that ends. And so mm -hmm. I want you that are listening here to look at the big picture, stop being so narrow-minded, stop being so stuck in your ways because we let a lot of shit pass that we shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, reality TV is, is entirely an insult to black people, but right. we can't stop watching it. <clears throat> Hip hop is almost 100% weaponized against us right now, but we yeah. can't stop listening to it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We got we got a lot of soul searching to do, and we got to learn how to start nipping things in the bud. That was it's, my last thing. Go ahead. It's, Go ahead. It, it, it's a lot like somebody um, driving an eighteen wheeler, yeah. and they just you know they they back it up nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow, and here you go, and the whole time you see it coming right your direction, and you're like, well, well that's not my business, or. Hey man, you should move. Why, why are you in the business? My, my business. Or 
mind the business that pays you. Don't worry about what's going on. And the truck gets an inch from your nose. You're still not worried about it because it's not your business. Then all of a sudden, one of them big-ass dual tires goes and ever so gently starts rolling across your foot. Now all of a sudden, it's, ah, ah, get off. Get off. You, you, you only had infinity to yell at the driver. You only had forever to get your goofy ass out the way, take five, four or five steps back, and the truck would be able to go on by this merry way. But no, you chose to stand right where you are. You see the danger coming. Right. And you did it out of the way because you had to wait for it to be not even on your doorstep. You had to wait for it to be in your house, uh-huh. sitting uh-huh. on the sofa right next to you, eating your popcorn, sipping your drink, pushing the remote, the buttons on your remote control on your TV, playing yeah. with your audio. You had to wait till it got that close to you. If you have to wait for something to hit you in the face, to hit you in the nose before you realize, you know what, this is a problem. Um, you have a severe mental impairment. Either you're very slow intellectually, and I'm not I being funny, kind of saying I'm serious. You're either very slow, you either are unable to see or think more than one or two moves ahead. Again, you have to wait till something is right there, it's blatant, Correct. before you can pick up on the signs and cues. Or for some wicked reason, you have a vested interest in that going down that way. Correct. So it's either you're slow. It's either you're unable to see, you have no vision, and or it's either because you have some part to play in what's going on. And if it's one of the first two, that's not a knock against you. You have the right to be slow. The same way have some people the right to be quick, you have the right to be slow. You have the right to not have vision, but you need to recognize your limitations. If you understand, hey, I have a problem with seeing the next move, whatever, you need to listen to what other people are saying and see if maybe you can pick up on what's being put down. Mm. Every criticism isn't 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 um isn't some being negative or whatever. Sometimes people are just saying, "Hey, get out the way, man! It's about to go down." Yeah. So, so like so. like like uh like good like Mike Tyson said, every person you um that helps you isn't your friend, and everybody that you fight is not your enemy. Mm. Real talk. That's heavy. Yeah, you that's have heavy. to be able to, and that's part of being vulnerable. We're talking about uh, emotional maturity. Part of emotional maturity is vulnerability. Part of vulnerability is being able to say, you know what, I recognize I'm limited because you talk about seeking help. I recognize I'm limited. I may be good and great in other things and other situations, but I do not have the best skills when it comes to perception, evaluation, critical thinking analysis. So you need to find people who are good at that and lean on them so that your their strength can become your strength. Again, it's not putting you down. If that's what it is, it is what it is. You know, some some people can't count for shit. They're terrible. You you put you you put a division problem in front of them, a multiplication problem in them. They're going to be scratching their brains. But you give them an S to the right, they can bang that out beautifully, and vice versa. You have to recognize where you're weak and where you're strong, and you have to make the adjustments for your weaknesses. Correct. Yeah, real that's talk. that's yeah, real, yeah. real, real, real talk. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't understand it until it's too late. You know, we. <laughs> Uh, I've been telling people about masks before COVID hit and people was under, didn't understand how did I know that information? I mean, you just do your research. A lot of times history will tell you what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, just doing your due diligence of just looking for stuff to be ahead of the game. Always, you know, be ahead of the game. That's why we always talk about chess because chess, you have to be moves ahead of your opponent. Um, and that's how you survive in this world. So when we're telling you things, you have three brothers on here that are very, uh, intelligent and could tell you historically how things are moved. You know, when, um, shout out to Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, we had honored her on crown check one time and Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, you know, she got it from Neely Fuller. Um, and they both were talking about how um, men were going to be wearing dresses. You know what I'm saying? And no, this didn't. was back in, what, the 70s? They were yeah, talking about that? 70s, 80s? Far. Around that time? They hit it out and, and now that's what you're seeing now. So you have it's like, it's like, they, like they had It's like they had a, a telescope looking into today. Like, like they saw like exactly. it was happening in real time. And remember, this was the sister 
And this was this wasn't uh, Neely Fuller. This was Dr. Francis Cress Wilson that told you Trump was going to be president. <laughs> Nobody believed the sister. She told Crazy. you because y'all got to understand. Sometimes when people see things and it come true, those are the people you need to study and follow. Those are the people you need to ask. You know what I'm saying? I was mm -hmm. telling people multiple times different things that were going to happen and it ended up happening. And people yes. have now opened their eyes on it, onto it. And I have a platform coming called Politically Dope that will talk about the politics uh, side of it. But um, nice. it just goes to show you that, you know, when you have brothers that are telling you things, intelligent brothers, we're not telling you these things just to be talking. We don't babble. We don't waste breath. You know, somebody always say, um, I remember somebody said, um, why waste your breath? You know, I could save that six seconds to tell somebody I love them before I pass away. Yeah. Real you know, talk. <laughs> I, I might need that extra breath for, for a critical moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So why, why would we out here talking just to be talking? We're talking because we love our community. We love our people. You know, y'all be the same ones that say that we hate women, but yet we do more for women. We uh, basically acknowledge women. You know, we embrace women. We're raised by strong women. We we understand it. We we basically acknowledge it and we support it and we admire it and we appreciate it. Mm. The reason that we talk about the no good people, the no good men and the no good women is because that is not part of black excellence. There is no need for that in our society if we're trying to build a village. Remember right. when we were growing up, when we were growing up, we got beat by people we ain't even know. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When we got home, we got an yeah. extra beating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got an extra beating on top of that beating. So, you know, I was, I, I had went to school in Jamaica for two years. And I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you like this. I thought, because I was coming from the American society, like, you know, we come here, we miss homework. They don't really say nothing. Shit. Yeah. You miss homework in Jamaica? Man, the teacher got a big wrestling belt. I'm talking about, you Whoa. remember the old school, um, the old school, uh, you remember the, the, the old power, school the poster worker? The belt. You remember yeah. the old school poster worker belt? The old yeah. school, like the people who know old school post to work about oh, no. was the damn WWF belts, right? They had, dog, this lady had the damn WWF belt, size Hilarious. belt on top of her desk. I uh, didn't come with my, uh, with my, um, I didn't do my homework. So I thought I was cool. This yeah. lady whooped me in the class. I was like, <laughs> yo, is this legal? <laughs> she tore my ass up in the class. Now I'm coming from American society, living in Jamaica, and I was like, Ooh. "This is what goes on." No wonder their education is on top in the uh -huh. Caribbeans, right? They don't play that. Yeah. So not only did I get beat from there, my neighbor, who was real close to my pit, found out, and I got called over the next door, and I got my ass tore up. Then I went next door, and my grandmother tells me, "Yeah, wait till your grandfather come." He going to tear your ass up. And then my grandfather tore my ass up. And this uh, nigga had the, he had the, the Jesus Karachi Sandal 12, which in Jamaica, in Jamaica, them shit shaped like a boat. And this nigga had like size 13 feet. So <laughs> at that time, that was like a whole board. That was like a whole board to my back. Yeah, we're going on a world tour, boy. Yes, my grandfather. <laughs> My grandfather is about 6'4", about 280. And this man got the strength of, of of Zeus. Not that dude. Man, when Damn. I tell you, when I tell you <clears throat> that after that day, I never took education for granted. Oh, I made sure I had that. everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And everything was in order. Uh, it straightened me. And it wasn't just my, if my granddad had beat me, I don't think it would have been affected. But knowing that this teacher loved me enough to beat me because she knew that I would have started a bad habit and she right. corrected and nipped it in the bud. Then my neighbor who understands that if I don't go out here and be productive myself, 
Yeah. I'm going to end up breaking into her home or other yeah. people's home. So she mm -hmm. beat me as a community to say, your ass ain't going to be no goddamn criminal. And yeah. I'm coming home to my grandfather who was beating me to let me know that you are far more intelligent than the shit that you exuded. And also, you know better. You understand that you're more than what this bullshit you carrying on with. And we're yeah. not going to accept it. So I got beat by three different people with three different meanings, but they all were part of our community and they all were the village and they took care of what? Their child. I was their child. And this is what we're telling you. When we point stuff out, we're the village. We're right. pointing stuff out because this affects all aspects of our community. Mm -hmm. So when I point something out or Bobby points something out or a uh, major points something out, we're all pointing it out because we understand the effects of it if we let it go wild and not nip it in the bud. If you see a fire that starts off in the grass and there is no, there's no uh, houses or nothing, it's just a small fire inside in the greenery, inside the grass, mm -hmm. you're not gonna put it out? Of course you're gonna put it out because if I don't put it out, guess what? It turns into a California wildfire. Now no. you got ambulance and everybody that can't even put it out. They got to wait it out. It's too big. It's too big. And no. that's what we're saying with the community of how you are keeping everybody in check. Because once you check somebody, you're not only checking one person, you're checking and making sure that the whole community is protected by that. That's so right. we just want you guys to understand that when we come and talk about stuff, it's from a place of love, not a place of hurt. So uh, take our lessons, take that uh, and apply it to yourself. If you're a person that, if you don't wanna go out here and teach people, when you see people out here teaching, just move out the way, let them do what they do. We understand that you wouldn't do it, don't block them from what they're doing because maybe, maybe it's a calling from their ancestors to do it. Because everybody don't want to do their ancestors' work, but damn sure everybody want the ancestors' uh, production and and and, and uh, productivity from it. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to see the finished product that the ancestors have brought to us, but nobody wants to put in the work. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, everybody didn't rally behind to go grab shotguns to follow Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman said, "Fuck it, I'll grab the shotgun." And she made a way for millions of people to be free and be born free instead of being in slavery. Yeah. So imagine if somebody picked up a gun and shot her. Now mm -hmm. you killed a whole bunch of people that would have been born free on the free territory and not on the plantation. So you're killing your own demise. You're killing your own people by sitting back, sending shots, or going after the people that's trying to free the masses and protect the masses. Always remember that. Real time. All right. Yes, sir. So, amen. Um, yes, definitely. I, I definitely wanted to point out this one um, comment I thought was very dope. Uh, Mila had wrote uh, this comment was pretty dope. She said, pr uh, pr Prisons are filled with brothers and sisters who have a lower adversity quotient versus than um, intelligent quotient. So I thought that was pretty dope because it is a lot of intelligent people that's in prison, but not a lot of people that exude emotional maturity. And we see that, especially in the domestic violence situations that's happening recently. We see oh, yeah. a lot of increased domestic violence because people don't have the emotional maturity to get out of that situation and level it off and have the uh, intelligence enough to say to themselves, how do we work out of this situation? We don't see eye to eye. Before it escalates to something to another level, how do we move out of this situation? That way I can move out and I'd be happy with it. You can move out and be happy with it. No, it's one person saying something, then it escalates to another person saying something and somebody ends up dying. And we've seen that on Facebook Live the other day when the brother was trying to get up out of there and the girl sat back and kept escalating it and then her mother who instigating it, she's instigating the whole thing. And guess what? Shorty picked up the gun and shot her husband dead. And we, we played that last week. 
And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people had to sign in to uh, to get to the last program we had because it had, um, you know, the disturbing violence behind the, um, the, the live video that we played. Um, even though the room was dark, I wanted people to hear how the children came in and witnessed their, their father shot dead by their mother and they were crying. And that was that was harmful, that hurt him. You know, and that's what I told you before when we talk about uh, emotional maturity, how to maneuver out of a situation so it don't go all the way left. And that went all the way left. And guess what? The grandmother barely could take care of the children and she had her daughter now her daughter goes to jail for killing this guy, for killing her, 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 her man, um, her, ch her children's father. Now the children's father is dead. He can't take care of nobody. He can't make no money for these children. So now you have five children that they have all where they're going to go. The grandmother can't take care of them. So I'm pretty sure they're going to fall into the system. You know what I'm saying? All because you didn't have the emotions under control, the emotional maturity to say, you know what, I, I I have an issue with this, but I'm not going to handle it this way. We're going to yeah. sit down and think of a better way to handle this, but something has to be done opposed to you raising your voice. And then when he reacted, all of a sudden you picked the gun up and you shot him in cold blood. This has to change. And we see the scenario vice versa, where guys will do the same thing, provoke, um, guys will sit back and and a woman with, you know, trying to get out of the situation and he's not allowing her and he ends up killing her. We seen a, a man on live FaceTime, well, not live, but he FaceTimed his girl choking the hell out of his two-year-old daughter on FaceTime so she could see it because he was with, a, she was with another man um, and didn't want to be with him. They were already separated. They were co-parenting. And in, because you were so emotionally hurt and you raised your emotions to kill your own daughter and you wanted to show that live on FaceTime to your child's mother. And to me, that, that right there is like the lowest of lows. Because you know, at the end of the day, I don't have any children. Y'all don't have any children, but I've raised children like my mm. own. Because I yeah. know at the end of the day, we lived our lives. If I died for a child right now, I wouldn't feel bad because right. I want that child to live their life like I did. I live my life. I live probably one of the best lives I think I could live. And people think you have to have numerous amount of money to do that. No, I had a great childhood. I had a great life that I created for myself. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. if I die tomorrow for that child, I will sacrifice my life for a child because I want that child to grow up and enjoy their life as well, extendedly. I wouldn't want a child to get their life ended at a young age before they can experience this world. And for you to choke out a two-year-old that just wants to have fun, just loves you, loves your daddy, loves her mama, you know, loves seeing her friends, just living a peaceful life, and you kill her because of your emotional instability for your ex-girl who is with, who's happy with another man because you couldn't provide that kind of happiness. And I'm not saying that you're supposed to provide a happiness for your woman, but you didn't make it work enough for you to contain your family with the life you created with her. So she went outside of that and seeked it elsewhere and you took it out on a child that had no, they, that child had nothing to do with your conflict between you and your children's mother. And for you to do something so heinous, heinous as that, you definitely need to burn in hell for that. There's Real no time. excuse for that. And mm -hmm. we are here on Manifestations to help brothers to not get to that level because that destroys us. Because guess what? I tell people this all the time. Imagine that little girl as Harriet Tubman. Imagine that little girl as, uh, um, you know, uh, Asada Shakur or you know, some of our great women out there, or even Dr. Francis Press Wilson, or the lady who we honored who had the 200 patents, or even the black lady that invented the, um, the, the navigation system, the GPS. Imagine right. that little girl was one of those words, was that little girl. You just destroyed a whole nation 
a whole society because that little girl would have grew probably would have grew up and did something so spectacular for the whole world to live and adapt to and 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 be grateful for the technology that could have provided. Yeah. Imagine if somebody would have strangled the neck of the lady who um who created the GPS. We wouldn't even have no damn GPS right now. Yeah. We'll still be we'll we'll still be on the back of the goddamn car looking at street maps. <laughs> so now, that's why I say, you know, with Malcolm X, if they, somebody had killed Malcolm X at a young age, we wouldn't have had the great Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we got to protect our children because we don't know how great they will be. We don't right. know who they'll turn out to be. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's very important that we preserve life, protect life. But in the process of it, we got to do a better job between us as men and women to understand and have the maturity to say, I can walk away with, from this with a healthy attitude and a healthy mindset, and mm -hmm. I can deal with the disagreements on another level but or another day. But guess what? We have another day to go and tackle that disagreement. Yes. yes. And that's important. Uh, to tack on to that, um, that's dealing with the adults, but also um, from the child's, pers pers um, from the child's uh, perspective, that's also why it's very important for us to uh, begin teaching emotional intelligence and emotional maturity mm -hmm. to our children from an early age. Um, if art now, we understand now that it's a different age now, and these are things that we're just only now really starting to discuss publicly, and um, people are at least able to understand and have it at least be recognizable um, at a household level. But mm -hmm. for everyone now, currently that has a child and will have children in the future. It's on you to begin now starting to teach your children first teaching yourself, because if you don't have the concepts down, ain't no way in hell you're gonna be able to teach it to them. So first educate yourself, work with and train yourself, develop emotional intelligence and emotional maturity, and then start teaching it to the children. Because um, the same way how you have children losing their lives because of adults that don't have, um, an adequate level of emotional maturity um, that also applies to the children too. So how many children, especially when we're talking about black children, we understand that it doesn't necessarily call for reaching adulthood because we have um, children in some cases who get swept up now and get charged with adults for certain crimes in some cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. You know, teach them emotional maturity, teach them how to um, be strategic in their thinking, how to be proactive instead of reactive. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't wait for stuff hitting the fan before you go ahead and you and you make moves. Do things so when it hits the fan, you know we're even near the area. You you've been yeah. gone, been cleared. Mm -hmm. Don't hang around with friends and people, and don't make friends with people who you know are always in trouble, who don't do the right thing because you understand that um, nothing good is going to come out of that. Correct. You know, making those wise decisions early, but being able to express yourself so you don't get frustrated, you don't become stubborn and obstinate you don't become um disobedient or defiant you don't become violent and develop tempers because you can't properly express yourself outside of swinging your fists or picking up objects and whatever you know these are things that we have a lot of children right now in juvie for real talk yeah. once, once you get caught up in that system you know that that's a revolving door you out today don't worry you'll be back in a few more days um, a lot of it is designed that way to begin with, but you teach our kids these skills, you're going to significantly begin chopping down that prison population. Because if you look at what a lot of these people are in prison, we're talking about the adults now. Hmm. Don't worry about the crime. Don't worry about the arson, uh, the rape, the murder, the fraud, all the other things. Those are the crimes. But when you look at the, the, the bedrock of those, the foundations, how do we get here? Because you weren't born a murderer, you weren't born a, a rapist, you weren't born an arsonist. When you look at how we got here, you will typically find that a lot of those issues they had started young and they were a result of low emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to handle certain things. And when they tried to do it their way, it was the wrong way. And they became, got better, better, better at it. It became more advanced, more evolved. And next thing you know, you're staying in front of the judge in an orange jumpsuit, shackled up, and you're getting yeah. sent away for a significantly long time. In some cases, you're never going to get out again. You're not going to get out until uh, they wheel your, your, your corpse out of there. 
That's crazy. So these are things that um, the crazy thing is the benefits of being able to get this early are huge. Most people yeah. who are in significant places of leadership and authority typically they have these things mastered down because if you're the if you're the dickhead that no one can get along with, if you're the jackass that you know you always blow up on people, you can't have discussions, you can't take telling or whatever. Those are the people yeah. that tend to end up going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people who, on the other hand, have mastered that more often than not, they're where they want to be, whether that's at a high level in the corporate sense or you're just in their personal lives. But these are skills that have tremendous benefits from early, and the absence of them has, on the flip side, tremendous consequences for them that can cost them their life, liberty, freedom, and other important opportunities that they need and would love to have in their lives. Yes. Let, yes, me, let me add this here real quick. I know, Ant, you want to move on real quick, real quick. I no, promise. no, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to shout out my grandmother um, one more time. You bring me back to a place where I'm thinking about something she taught me when I was a small child, and I still use it to this day. Very simple quote. She must have mm -hmm. started telling me this when I was like four years old. Controlled anger becomes strategy. Those four words have gotten me into some of the best spaces that I've ever been in and out of the, some of the worst predicaments that I've ever been in. Controlled anger becomes strategy. And while I thought that was just so fitting for this conversation about emotional maturity, and let me also just tack in there, you know, mm -hmm. for those of us that do not have emotional maturity or mastery of emotional maturity I want to go back to something that we something else that we discussed on this show before mm -hmm. professional therapy okay as a community we do not get the help that we need and these insecurities that we have these inabilities to control our emotions that we have this lack of discipline that we have all of these things just keep bubbling up and bubbling up until there's a disaster you know what i mean and if you do not have the skills i'm putting it out there go sit your ass on somebody's couch and listen and learn you know what i mean get it off your chest you know get get what you got to get out but also be prepared to receive what this person is going to is going to give you because some of us we we have a very serious we have very serious mental deficiencies in our community that we do not talk about people walking around every day thinking they're perfectly fine that are absolutely not fine at all very very much mentally i want a second opinion on that <laughs> real talk real talk mm -hmm. very much mentally deficient that has to change but yeah, I'll land my plane now. Yeah, so I wanted to go to very great point, very great point. Um, yeah, I yeah. wanted to to get back to Natasha's uh, statement. She says, um, "Men sadly are often set up early to be emotionally stunted as boys for a number of various reasons. We raise boys and girls very differently, and often think." We have good intentions. And that's true to an extent. Um, but 75%, and this is this this was the video I was just about to play. 75% of women are actually more emotionally instable than men. A lot of people don't a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know that stat. They think that men are mostly uh, emotionally um unstable and that's another uh, we got to do a whole show about myths <laughs> we have to do, do a whole show we, we got to do, do a whole yeah. show about myths because i think what happens is through the myths um we we let a lot of things fly based on myths and if if, if it's based on myths and we let it fly it becomes like you say culture so we right, get culturally right. adapted into our mind to think like that because mm -hmm. we we were culturally adapted to think that men wasn't crap and men didn't take care of their children because we look at proximity uh experiences and anomaly situations 
Mm -hmm. And we just base that and say, oh, damn, there's a lot of guys out here that I know that ain't taking care of their children. But statistically, because right. we have over 7 billion people in the world, black, the men, black men rank number one inside and outside the household. And it's very important for us to put the outside the household because they don't have to be inside your home to be good fathers. There's a lot of fathers that are outside the house that are phenomenal fathers to their children. Mm -hmm. And because we let these you know myths run then you know they they account for why a lot of brothers probably are three times more likely to commit suicide because yeah. if i'm doing everything good and people feel like i'm not doing enough or i'm not doing it then you know it comes a time where you feel like you only have one option and that's something we don't want to happen we want to try to get information out there. We, that's why we made conversations because we want to target the men. We want to uplift them because the problem that I see is a lot of men don't have a lot of self-love and a lot of self-esteem. And that's something that we want to uplift on this program. We want you to have self-love and self-esteem. We already told you that if somebody talks about happy um happy life happy wife happy wife happy life that is a wrong thing you know because once we start changing the narrative to be happy house happy spouse then you understand that the happiness has to flow throughout the whole household it doesn't land on a man's back it's not everything uh he has to provide for everybody and nobody's there for him that creates a depression and which leads to uh, the avenue of possible suicide. So we want men to understand, like, you know, build up themselves, be that quality guy out here. And if you're running across the ratchets, you know how to maneuver around them and find women of quality. You know how we talk about de-discipline on here. We talk about so many things that can help you in the long run. So yeah. what I think a lot of times is um, people... Um, don't understand because they really don't have either a platform to express themselves a safe space, especially men. Men don't have as much safe spaces as provided as other women. And um, they don't think that there's people out here to rally behind them on how they feel. And once you get to find a spot or you hear a platform that is breathing life into you, now your outlook on life is a bit different. So we've heard great feedbacks on Manversation and how it's providing that for the people. And this is why we said we know uh, we can be very long winded. So we're trying to, you know, compact it up for you. So that way, you know, you guys can really embrace this uh, platform and get the gems in as impactful as possible within a shorter time than we was giving you before. But even though we was giving you a lot, it just I understand it was consumed a lot. But we want to make sure that we get the information to you so that way you can empower yourself because that's what we're all about. It's all about empowering uh, the men and the women out here so that way we can have an empowered community. It goes hand in hand. Um, so uh, real quick, I wanted to uh, show you guys this, uh, the question of the day. Um, sure. So we talked about the question of the day the other day but I had just posted it um, on my timeline. So the question of the day was, a man is having, oh geez, I said sexy. <laughs> a man is having sex, a man is having sex with a woman. <laughs> a, man is having sex. <laughs> a man is having sex with a woman. They live together, everything is good, but every time she has errands to run like grocery store, taking children to school and appointments, she asked to use the car. He told her, we are fucking, and you don't have to ask. He wants to know, was he wrong for saying that? And also, why do women ask when things should seem so obvious to do? Your thoughts. Mm. So we talked about that. Uh, but yeah. anybody want to chime in on the chat, you could definitely chime in and let us know what your thoughts is on that. Um, but what what you guys say? Uh, they didn't hear the conversation. Huh? We talked about it, but they didn't hear the conversation. Go ahead. Yeah, go they ahead. didn't hear the conversation, so that's why I wanted to bring it up uh, tonight. 
Well, I mean, what why we're waiting for them to chime in because I know they're gonna have something to say in the chat. Yeah, why we I, I I I'll just double down on my initial point. Um mm. I think women often ask questions um that they should know the answer to just out of kindness and respect. I really yeah. do. You know, my girl is probably the sweetest person I've ever met in my life. And she asks stuff all the time. I mean, like, can I have some of your soda? I mean, you're my wife. Are you kidding me? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, when she yeah. does it, you know, and she's very sincere. You know what I mean? She's yeah. very sincere. She does not ever want to violate my space. And I think it's because she's such a nice and kind person and because Correct. she just loves and respects me so much. You know what Correct. I mean? Like, the, the smallest thing, I'm telling you, it don't matter what it is, she always asks is this okay is this okay even if she's looking at clothes you know and you know it's a it's a little questionable is this okay you know before she buys anything she is so respectful so while she maybe shouldn't have to ask these things give thanks yeah. that she does you know what I'm saying? Because that right, you know, you have the polar opposite of that type of female. I'm going to just do what the hell I want and let the chips fall where they may. You know, if we got to we got to brawl about it later, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? It just That's is what definitely it is. the better end of the extremes to be on. That's, I'm going to just live with that. <laughs> you, figure, you figure it out. Like, you know, so give thanks that she's that considerate of you, my G. You know, because that's a that's a solid quality woman right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you know, you always let her know, reaffirm to her that she has the right to any and everything, you know, that's yours or whatever the case may be, because she's yours and you're hers. And that's the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, you know, let reaffirm that to her. They, they, they love to hear that. They love that reassurance, even though they may already know. It's yeah. just give them an extra boost of confidence and they'll let you know that you love them that much more and that you feel much more. You know what I'm saying? But it's a good thing that they ask it. You know what I mean? If we're being totally real because the just having the level of respect, especially in 2023 where you know, for some, for some they expect to get along with men while not caring about what men think or like or require, or whatever the case may be. I don't know how that works, right? But yeah. that is the general mood, you know, uh, among many women in 2023. Yeah, She's showing you by asking you that. She's old school. You know, she cares. She respect what you say like the scriptures. You dig? Yeah. And that's where we need to be. You know, at the Correct. end of the day. You know, y'all need to both have that respect for each other. And she's just showing you that when she asks you that. So, my dude, you got a winner. You know what I'm saying? It may seem a little off-putting or a little strange, but you got you a winner, man. And also, yeah. let me put out there, too. It depends on the level of Correct. the relationship. You know what I'm saying? It also depends Correct. on the level of the relationship, right? Correct. If you're getting with a dude, and you know y'all ain't that solidified is different you know what i'm Correct. saying so i don't think when we when we were very clear on the level that they were at i don't think so Correct. but i mean it seemed like they were living together at least so i think they're at least pretty serious there so i get yeah. it but you know just just accept that and strive my dude yeah correct yeah i i i say um you know like we was talking about it and I said that, you know, you got to understand from the perspective of um, understand from this perspective that everybody, when they engage into a relationship or they engage into interaction with somebody, everybody comes with a past. Everybody's ran across different uh, levels of people, uh, yeah. mentally, intellectually, financially. Right. So um, when you come across certain various peoples like that, um, especially women, um, they get different type of men. So maybe she ran across a guy who was telling her like, hey, I don't care if we fucking or whatever, ask me before you take my stuff. You know what I'm saying? You have some men out there. 
um, I remember I was telling you guys like, hey, if I know how she drive, <laughs> yeah. I'll take you there. <laughs> but you ain't gonna drive my whip because you drive reckless. Yeah. Like you don't want to tear my shit up. Like you know, if it's that level. But if I trust your driving, then take the keys. It's not a problem. You yeah. know, um, if we're on that level, you know, people don't understand. And this is why we, you know, different people value sex differently. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, right. We're men of intention. We're men who understands the value of sex. That's why we don't give our sex away so easy. You know, yeah. we have de discipline. Um, mm. if, if I'm engaging in sex with a woman, if I'm putting my life on the line with this woman, especially if I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you probably, you know, having raw sex with her, you know, yeah. if I'm on that level of having sex with somebody raw, then mm. there's no, there's no need to ask me. <laughs> And you know right. what is what is, right. is agreed is understood you feel me there's, right. there's just that level of understood like you don't have to say anything it's just understood it's it's, it's communicated yeah. through telepathy you just know like nah go ahead take the keys we'll do whatever you got to do you know what i'm saying but i think it's just the mere fact that she has respect for you enough to know that i'm not going to take your vehicle without you saying something and also you know uh, like I was telling the brother, um, you have to understand, she don't know if you got obligations to go somewhere. What if right. you had to go run somewhere and Ooh. she ran to go take the car and you had to be at an important meeting? She's being considerate. That's you see what I'm goes. saying? Then no. you would have been asked out and probably would have been mad as hell. Like, why you ain't <laughs> asked me? Because I got a meeting. Or I could have <laughs> told you to just drop me off while you out there and come mm -hmm. pick me back later. So this goes back into the realms of communication. Right. This goes back to emotional maturity of understanding. Yep. She's that displaying she that by asking that question. Exactly. She's, yeah. you know, she's exuding that by doing that. Yes. Oh, when um, I don't believe that it's possible, um, and if it is, I don't know what it calls for, but I'm convinced nobody is doing nearly enough where um that could possibly be in jeopardy but um i don't believe that it's possible to have too much communication with your significant other um sure. while it's definitely possible to have too little i don't really know what too much communication would look like sure. um because communication does so much primarily it um it serves to both uh strengthen bonds that you have with each other yeah. and to really get become tighter with each other and also serves to clear up confusions and misunderstandings, which means you're solving problems before they even occur. You're being proactive instead of reactive. You're not waiting for something to go wrong, and then you're trying to figure out, well, well, what the hell happened? What's the disconnect? What's the conflict? What are you upset about? What am I upset about? Instead, it's right. getting in front at the begin with, so you're minimizing any opportunity for anything to go wrong, and then you're also mitigating it in advance. Um, that's how you get those relationships where you have people that, uh, the couple, they know each other so well, they're able to finish the sentences. They can yes, just, you know, exactly. Exactly. share a glance. They, they could be at a, at a dinner someplace. They can just look across the table at each other or just, you know, yeah. nudge each other. And they know exactly what that means. And they're just in Correct. sync and intent. Mm -hmm. um, in a situation like that, I think that's a great opportunity to ask. Um, you know, well, I noticed, you know, you're always asking permission, whatever, or what's, you know, what's, what's behind that? What's up with that? Or, or, uh, have you always been that kind of person or just what's not that you necessarily is trying to, um, say that it's a problem, but just to understand the better so you get to know where they're coming from. And then you can find out some of those answers because some of those things might be useful to know. So maybe it's just a case of, I just, you know, I'm being mindful. I'm being respectful. You know, I just want to, you know, to let you know that I respect you and try to reinforce that. It could be a case mm -hmm. of, well, in previous relationships, I had issues where I wasn't doing this and it caused a lot of problems. So now I'm being proactive about it. It could even be something more extreme where I've dealt with people that were very, very harsh about this. And so now I'm just making sure that it's a number of different reasons, but it's yeah. opportunity to grow and understand your mate better. And yeah. again, to open up those lines of communication with one another. Um, yeah. That's very important to do when you're dealing with another person who is coming from different circumstances. They have different life experience from you. Um, they might be in different social circles, might even be um, a significant age difference present. But you're dealing with someone who is their own person, who comes with their own backgrounds. And anytime you're able to make the footing more equal, that's a net win. 
You know, everyone's going to, it, it, you benefit from being on the same page where you're able to establish these things and able to make better sense out of where people are coming from. So you can better meet needs, um, deal with and address wants as they arise, and get better into sync with each other. Correct. Real talk. Correct, correct. I see quite a few responses in the chat. Um, yes. Yeah, we, um, hold on, let me read some of them. Uh, I think she's being considerate and probably conditioned by previous relationships. Okay. Even if I know I can take it and, and still ask, I still ask. Okay. That's what uh, Natasha Gill saying. Renaissance man says agreed. Then he says he disagrees. Uh, women don't need to know everything. I ain't mad at you though. All right. All right. That's he, he want to be mysterious. He gonna be a little mysterious with it. I ain't mad at him. You know what I'm saying? It, there's different ways to approach it, but at the end of the day, it ain't it ain't nothing to trip about. I will say that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's you don't necessarily tell it, everything. You don't trip about. You know her. No. Yeah. That. It's 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 a it's it's really no wrong answer to it because it all depends on your mate. You feel right. me? It's just basic communication with your mate. All it takes is one time. To have that conversation and the rest of the time you already know which direction they're gonna they're gonna head in so it's not something to uh hold the head down or or get upset about um just a miscommunication or somebody just don't understand what level you on you know with the clarity you know sometimes if you're not making it known maybe you know they living together but maybe they might she might not think it's serious like that for her to you know hold something as valuable as your car so you know just different things and different levels of that that all comes down with communication so also we, uh, uh yeah, real ahead. quick shout out to natasha with what she said because i just peeped the response mm -hmm. that she made and um it's very very um accurate it goes again to communication where mm -hmm. she's up uh, lost it. she said um oh yeah she might not know or understand when he's talking about you know we just hunch we're just knocking boots whatever she yeah, might exactly. not know what comes along with that. So Correct. in his mind, he has the understanding of what just means. But and especially nowadays, we understand that there's a hot that's a hot topic of conversation where there's a lot of people that think that it means certain things. You're supposed to have more access to other people. Some people think you're just entitled to um, get your willies wet or whatever, and that's the end of it. You just you know bump uglies and go home or just go separate ways. Some people that means you're all borderline married or whatever. And there's yeah. a lot of gray area in between. So Correct. Um, again, that's one of the things that you have to discuss. And also understand that a lot of times relationships, including marriages, tend to fail because there's different expectations that aren't being met. But the reason Correct. these expectations aren't being met, the reason a lot of these conflicts are happening is because the conversations that would have cleared all this stuff up that would have made this plain were never had. Correct. A lot of these Correct. people are married or have been with people in relationship for years and there's a whole bunch of serious questions that have never once been asked and answered. And when it, when you find out the hard way, you realize, damn, we got married, and one of these big things for me, one of these big issues for me, is popping up right now. Well, you know, if your bright self would have asked certain questions or tried to, you know, get more in alignment before you went and made some of these significant steps, yeah, uh, you either would have gotten this resolved and it wouldn't be an issue now, or you would have realized early. When it was simple and painless to just cut and run, realize, hey, you know what, this ain't working out. Um, thanks for the time we had, or the, or you know, um, we'll just go our separate ways. Much love to you all, all the best for you, whatever. No must, no fuss. Yeah. Right. Now you got a messy divorce to go through. Now you got kids you got to worry about and visitation, or who knows what else. It's coming with that. Or again, sure. make sure you're on the same page. Well, we just well, we just fuck it. That right there. He will, he, in that situation, he might not have been aware of it, but that is the perfect opportunity for her to ask, okay, so we just, cool, I, I get that. Uh, so what does that mean to you? What, what are, the, what are the, the, what's the line of the sand? What can we do? What does this status entitle me to? Or what do I get with this? What is off limits? What are the boundaries, right? right. Because yeah. boundaries, contrary to the way they sound, boundaries are actually freedom. Mm. Where you know where the boundaries are, where you know where the do's and don'ts are, you are free to move with confidence, knowing you're not going to rustle any jimmies, you're not going to do anything that's untoward, because you know how far to go, 
and you know where you can just go ahead and operate in, as opposed to not knowing where the boundaries are, and you're either just reckless, bumping into every single one, crossing all the lines, or you're timid and tiptoeing around, walking on eggshells because you don't know if you're about to step on a landmine or not. Correct. You know, communication is king. It's emperor. It's it's shogun. It's it's rule. It's it's everything. It's supreme. You got to be on the same page. Yeah, that's correct. This is, uh, this I, is yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be done, man. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be done. But I, I just wanted to, you know, go back to the initial point. You know, um, we the, the the one thing in that statement that bothers me, if I was to, you know, pinpoint something, is that he instead of referencing the type of relationship they had. He referenced that they were fucking. That is a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because as Bob just said, as Bobby just said, as many other people will tell you, you know, there have been plenty of women that I, I've been, you know, rocking with in that capacity that could never drive my car. You understand what I'm saying? Like it, it don't that that shouldn't be from where I sit anyway. Mm -hmm. That should be the defining factor. Oh, we we smashing or whatever. I mean, for I'm, and I'm speaking more broadly now because again, we're different people at this point. I'm a different person at this point. I mm -hmm. date with intention. I date, you know, deliberately. You know, I'm working towards a goal in every situation. You know, speaking back to my most recent dating, I'm married now, but you understand. Most people don't operate in that capacity when they're dating. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying yeah. most is very fluid it, they they intentionally leave the lines blurred let's just keep it a buck mm -hmm. a lot of we intentionally leave the lines blurred because we don't want her to necessarily think too much you understand what i'm saying but we don't want her to think too little let's keep it a buck so you know within the confines of that thought space okay yeah, you kind of you kind of got to qualify uh, for me and the way that I rock with women, you know, whatever. Yes, then that's fine. But the average guy probably doesn't have that level of seriousness with the average woman he's dealing with sexually. You know what I mean? So it may be a little more a little more to discuss there. I, in other words, I can't just speak for me. That's me. You know what I mean? But. For a lot of other guys, if he's just smashing a chick, maybe she can't use his car. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and, and particularly, you know, for, for an extended period of time. You know what I mean? Like you say, he might have other things to do, whatever the case may be. But I think that in this case, yes, I still stand by my initial statement. But you, there, there needs to be a bit of qualifying. And to me, anyway, it shouldn't be based on sexual access as much as it is on the actual dimensions of the relationship where mm -hmm. the relationship is as opposed to all oh, we have is sex correct correct yeah all right. See, the fun the irony about the, that whole uh movement of oh no labels um because labels complicate things it's actually the opposite and it um, is it is and I, I i don't believe it's as cynical as i can be I actually don't believe that most people are going that route because they're trying to be um, deceptive and duplicitous. I definitely believe you have a significant number of people who are trying to move that way. Yeah. But I think in general, people who have bad experiences with relationships, they actually really, truly, honestly believe in themselves. They've sat down, they've gone over in the head a few times. Maybe they haven't. But they what what they got from those experiences is that well the issues came once we made it official once we put a title on it we're we're dating we're engaged whatever so that's where the problem comes in so I'm going to fix that by not putting a label on it so that makes it easier but again going back to what I said before the problem with that is now you've essentially activated the fog in your relationship. Yes. So you don't know what's where. You don't know where, where, if there's a toy car on the floor. You don't know if, if, if there's a log somewhere. You don't know if there's a fence. You, right. you don't know if there's broken glass. You're just stepping, moving, 
And honest to God, you're just hoping and praying that you don't make the wrong move or say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing because, again, you're like, well, we're, we're, we're just fucking, of course, we can take the keys. And she's probably thinking, and the fact that she's even reaching out, the, the whole problem is probably in her experience, well, anytime I've heard a dude say, we just clapping buns, that means I couldn't do anything more than get my rear end wet and go home. So I'm, I'm confused what this means. <laughs> um, and um, it appears she ended up on the generous side of that arrangement as opposed to being on the uh, short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. So now she's confused. Now I'm sure she's wondering, well, if that's the case, what else can we do? And then based on the way it sounds, if you if she keeps pulling to the string, it sounds to me that she's probably going to find out that, well, there's a whole lot of things I can do. Mm-hmm. And at some point, the question becomes, well, if we're doing all this, if I can get your keys and drive, if you can spend the night mm-hmm. at my place, get a key to your now. place. Go ahead. Um, if we're not really seeing anybody else, I mean, we're, we're, we're keeping our options open, but we're not actually see, actively seeking anybody else out. Uh-huh. Sounds a whole lot like we dating, like we're boyfriend and girlfriend. No, no, yeah. no, let's not put us on it. Hey. It's confusing. <laughs> a mentor you got to pick yourself through. At this point, you may as well audition for the Olympics and see if you can get that team because you you hitting the parallel bars, you doing the right. rings, you got a whole floor routine that you. You qualifying for the Olympics right now? Yeah. All that, mm-hmm. all those gymnastics, all this hopping around and trying to figure it out, but that it doesn't do you any good. It's better to just shoot straight, be upfront. This is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. And right. this goes to the topic that I've spoken on plenty in the past: abandoning the fear of the of the, of the scarcity mindset. If mm-hmm. you're dealing with this person and you like them, they seem good. But you're finding out, oh, there's some deal breakers that are popping up. Don't try and force the round peg into the square hole or vice versa. Don't try and make this fit. If it don't fit, it don't fit. That's it. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? It, it, you know, everything was going good, but you know, this is something that I can't budge on. Uh, you can maybe find out, okay, is this something that, that you can work with? You think that maybe you can adjust this? Or if you don't want to go that route, say, well, you know, I just think we should just go separate ways and do that. Yeah. Yo, billions upon you. billions upon billions of people in the world. If it don't work out with this one, I guarantee you there's somebody else somewhere around the corner that mm-hmm. is going to fit better with. Definitely. But when you operate from that scarcity mindset, that causes you to put up with a whole bunch of nonsense that you know damn well you ain't got no business putting up with. Right. And it's also blocking other people coming into the situation because most of the time, a car isn't going to just linger at this one spot hoping for someone to leave. Eventually, they go pull off and find another spot. Mm-hmm. If you've got the wrong car in your parking spot, you're cutting into your opportunities for other for the right person to get up in there, and opportunities are limitless. You don't mm-hmm. have an abundance of opportunities, and you don't know when yours are going to run out. You might have one more coming your way. You mm-hmm. might have dozens more. You don't know. So right. the sooner you adopt that abundance mindset and start thinking, you know what? This doesn't fit. I'm not going to make it fit because what does fit will get here. Make the world a difference. Who put the icing on the cake, man? You know what I'm saying? It sounds like even even the next step beyond that, what you're alluding to is, brothers, when we're in that space, we need to lead and we can't be afraid, you know, to pull a trigger and make it official. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's part of leadership. You know what I'm saying? That's part of emotional maturity. You know, when you're in a space, you have to be self self aware enough to know that you're in that space, and you have to lead within that space and make decisions. Correct. Don't sit on it. Don't bullshit about it. You know, don't 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 don't, run, don't chase the tail. Pull the trigger. Be yeah. definitive. Be intentional. One yeah. way or the other. Don't 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 linger in limbo for too long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If that's take what it charge. is, take you know, ownership. Right. Yeah. Take man, ownership. man up, man up. We man will up. either either succeed or fail on my go. But either way, it's I'm the one that's in the driver's seat. Dudes yeah. have to start. Uh, th- women have to do it as well too, but specifically because we're talking about men and leadership again. When when I hear leadership, in my mind, I think men. I think manhood. Right. right. That's that, that's how I operate. So as a man, so for me, if you're going to call yourself a man, if you're going to call yourself a leader, 
you can't be afraid to make the decisions. You're not going to get it right every single time. So put that out your head. Yeah. You are going to make some decisions, and sometimes they're going to be the wrong decision. Yeah. That's yeah. life. But the key is you learn from the failure. You figure out what went wrong. What can I do in the future to make sure that the next move is the best move? And you go from there because it's a learning, ex it's a learning experience. There's yeah. not a single leader, good, bad, or in between, that has not failed or has not been able to accomplish what they were trying to accomplish. Correct. But if this is a competent person, this is a competent leader, the competency comes in from learning from that and making the negative a positive. So then you get to the point where you can adopt the um the saying, I, I don't lose. I either win or I learn. Correct. It so is. if you make the wrong choice, whether you make the wrong choice, okay. Learn from yes. it. Next time, guess what? I bet I don't I bet I don't mess up again, or exactly. at least I bet I mess up different. I, I might mess up again, but it's not gonna be the same exact thing I just did. So eventually, I'm going to get my way out of this maze one way or the other. No, exactly. but you can't be afraid. You've got to embrace those opportunities for growth. Don't exactly. be scared of growth. Yes. Don't and be afraid. Always, embrace always, that. Always, always remember that every millionaire that you see failed several times before they got right. to a millionaire. That's right. So Maybe always that. remember that failure yeah or not getting it right will eventually lead you to success if you are putting in the work to get to that level. Mm. Always remember that. You can have the knowledge, but it doesn't mean anything if you're not applying it the right way. All right? So I definitely want to wrap this up because we've been on here for a minute, but we gave y'all a great game. We hey. gave y'all great, great advice. Nobody's talking about emotional maturity and on oh, this wow. level. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I definitely want to go over a couple of the um, the emotional maturity charts real quick um, before we get into our queen check. And yeah. Um, yeah. the first chart we have right here, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I'll read it off. Number one, starting on the top corner, is you don't hold grudges. Uh, number two, you look beyond your first impressions. Three, you stop looking for perfection. Four, you know that your flaw is better than anyone else. Mm. Five, you have a realistic perspective on love and relationships. Mm. Six, six, you nurture your inner child. Seven, you live a value-driven life. Mm. Eight, you're, an em you're empathic to communication. Uh, nine, you appreciate the little things in life. And 10, you know that happiness is a long life process, right? Can and, you please um, re can you please reread number five before you go to the next one? Okay. <laughs> number five is you have to have a you have to have a realistic perspective on love and relationships. And I know why he said that, because a lot of y'all are delusional. <laughs> Stop oh being delusional God. and start living in reality. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, this next list that we have right here is you are aware of your feelings. You don't make assumptions. You are aware of your weaknesses and strengths. You are confident. You are constantly working towards improving yourself. You let, other, you let go of grudges. You know how to maintain boundaries. You don't chase perfection. You know how to disconnect and focus on self-care. And you take responsibility mm. for your own happiness. Mm. Great. Not putting Great. that on somebody else. All right. I took the I took the um, job to make you happy. Mm. <laughs> I took the uh you guys can take there's plenty of emotional maturity tests out there. I took mm. um this one right before we came on the show and it says your eq level is excellent if you scored in this range there's a slight caveat however you are either extremely high in emotional intelligence or extremely low how is this possible the results may reflect your high level of self-knowledge or a lack of it since you must be self-aware to assess yourself accurately for this reason your self-awareness is the foundational competency um, 
of emotional intelligence. So um, I definitely uh, had the opportunity to do that. That was pretty fun. Um, so I advise everybody to go ahead and take your test. And then next time you guys come on here, you guys can always, uh, you know, type us in the inbox and let us know or in the chat room and let us know how your test results came out. And remember, it's not about trying to get the perfect score. It's all about being honest with yourself because, you know, you can lie on tests, you can cheat the test, but you're cheating yourself out of life. Because if right. you're not improving the right way, then you're not going to get the person that you really want or be around the company that you really want to be around. So make sure that you guys are doing it and doing it correctly to take an, a, a real great self-evaluation to see what areas you need to improve on to make yourself a way better person than you was the day before. So tonight's queen check. Da -da -da -da, queen check for tonight. So I had to think what woman would really fit this situation that we're talking about tonight because we're talking about emotional maturity. And I think this woman exudes that. I think she does exactly what we try to do here on Manversations, and that is trying to get men and women on the same accord. We're trying to, to straighten up the men and get rid of the dusties. We're trying to straighten up the women and get rid of the ratchets. And I said, who better to hold both sides accountable? And this person was compared to the equivalence of Kevin Samuels. And that person yeah, is. That, man, you took the thought right out of my head. Sister Shahrazad Ali. Sister man, Shahrazad man. Ali. Yes. Sister Shahrazad Ali uh, definitely is an icon in our community. Uh, she is an American author of several books, including a paperback called The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman, which is a very powerful book. If you haven't read that book, please go out there and go get the book, support the sister. Been doing incredible work for multiple years, dec over decades. The book was very controversial. And that's what we have to understand. Sometimes when they always talk about controversial books, sometimes books like that are really about truth and truth can make you uncomfortable and sometimes that uncomfortability will bring controversy and that's yeah. what happens with this book it was so powerful with a lot of truth in it that a lot of people thought it was controversial because they got kind of offended by it but a lot of people loved it because it, it was a real reality of stripping down everything and looking at the community how brothers and sisters function on a daily basis and stripping it down and getting to the bare facts of it. This book was uh, bringing forth community forums, pickets, and heated arguments amongst Black people in many parts of the United States when it was published in 1989. Sister Shahrazad Ali is definitely our queen check of the night. Uh, we appreciate her. And it would be very dope, man, if we could get her on the show, because that yeah. is something that we're definitely going to work on doing. Uh, sister. Is super dope. Awesome. We get, yeah, we definitely got to get her on here. And I know you guys would definitely love for sister to come chop it up with us three brothers. That would be a definitely impact, <laughs> impactful uh, show uh, that we will have for you guys. And we thank you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, we, sh we got this show shortened up for you tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We didn't give you an extra two hours running into 12 o'clock, but <laughs> we got everything packed in tonight and gave you a phenomenal topic and shout out to major for definitely bringing up this topic when he saw it i was like yo let's run with it um yeah. because a lot of times we don't talk about the emotional side of things and i think um just like the sister uh natasha was saying and i didn't i wasn't referring to the 75 percent as a slide to what she was saying i said what she said was uh, uh correct i just was saying that um, when you said more boys, uh, women more than boys, um, it was like a comparison. And when you do the comparison, you have to bring in the statistical data on that. But I do know what she's talking about on anomaly and in the enclave of, in the enclave of the black society. Yes, we have to do a better job with uh, having our young children, our young boys expressing emotional intelligence and emotional um emotional maturity um so that way when they grow up they don't have to indulge in something that seems foreign
but something that will end up being more natural because it's always been embedded since they were younger. And we have to do a better job of it collectively, not um, solely putting it on the mother, not solely putting it on the father, but collectively, right. like we talked about the village mentality, when I got beat in three different phases, um, you know, I got that point across, but we need that village mentality to make sure that everybody's putting in the different angles of strengthening the children in our community. Because remember, we have to protect them and not uh, create an environment where people are preying on them. Um, there's a lot of warfare going down um, that is aimed at our children, and we have to do a better job and strengthen ourselves to protect the targeting that's going on with our children. So we gotta protect the babies. We love our children. Um, we wanna see them succeed. We want to see them have a happy and uh, healthy life like the ones we're living ourselves. I think it, we owe them that right because our ancestors fought hard to get us in this predicament and this situation where we can be on Zoom talking to you and not in somebody's slave field picking up cotton or sleeping in the barn about to wake up six o'clock in the morning to go pick some cotton. So they right. fought for the revolution of what we see today as what we see as progress. And we need to fight harder for them to make what the life we're living now, there should, they should be living a better life than what we are. Every generation has to make this, this, the strides to make sure the generation after them is living better than they live. That's the whole point of progress and being better. Whenever you see the next generation prospering better than the previous one, then you're doing a good job by increasing and being better in the community. So I definitely would want to leave with you, leave you guys with that. But I'll let you guys uh, wrap up before we get out of here with your final thoughts for, um, you know, what you got to say before we get up out of here. Man, I'm I'm gonna be brief, but yo, I I just gotta bring it back for the crown check of the night. Sister Sharazad Ali is a big deal. Um, whenever I come across sisters who ask, you know, who should I listen to? Who should I read? You know, whatever the case may be, the first name yeah. I say is Sister Sharazad Ali. And right after Correct. that, we do Francis Chris Wilson. Uh, and that's only because it's usually with regards to dating and relationship advice that they ask these type of things. Um, but those sisters are both spot on. But that sister right there is the truth. You know what I mean? She was out here in the trenches, you know, on national television, you know, discussing these things and, you know, pushing accountability um, long before we came along, long before Kevin Samuels. You know, this is back in the late 80s, you know, and this sister brought the fire every time, you know, she used to go hard on everybody, but she particularly went hard on the women. And, and this is something that I talk with a lot of sisters about when they say, you know, y'all always going in so hard on the women or whatever the case may be. I always kind of throw it back. If you were doing your job holding other women accountable, we wouldn't have to. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so this sister exemplified that in every way because she yeah. understood you know, that women out here tooting their ass up and, and doing sexualized dances every time there's a camera in their face is a bad look. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That, that's the long and short of it. You know, we can sit up here and pretend that we don't know what's wrong with that all we like. There's something very wrong with that. And she wasn't, you know, she, she didn't hold back when she was criticizing the brothers either. You know, mm -hmm. we all have our flaws and we all need to take accountability for them and correct them period correct. The end. no excuses no i have a hashtag no coddling no excuses and correct. that that's for and that sister was very much about that no coddling no excuses let's be emotionally mature in the way that we deal with each other let's be intentional and deliberate about our intentions with each other let's respect each other let's love each other let's do some nation building with one another yeah. at a group be one excellent excellent point yeah like uh i want to say like uh mila mila renee you could say that's like a younger version of uh sister Sa sharazad ali Real talk. Our queen mila, mila be renee. doing her thing yes, yes. yeah we we definitely going to get mila they be chopping it up on here one night we're going to yeah, definitely mila. add it in and uh we talked about it. yes definitely yeah. we, we gotta yeah. do that all right, Bobby, go ahead, wrap it up for us. Bring it home, Bobby. Um, 
So real quick, I was going to um, mention it initially when it was discussed, but uh, I liked the flow of where it was going. I didn't want to take away from that. And I figured I'd just tuck it in my pocket and bring it out towards the end. Yeah. So because typically when you have conversations related to this, unfortunately, um, as the saying goes, um, you know, people on um, the high end of the spectrum discuss ideas. Uh, people on the middle level of the spectrum tend to discuss events and people at the low end of the spectrum tend to discuss people. Mm. So typically when you have conversations like this, usually, unfortunately, depending on the um, circles you're in, if you're on the lower end of the spectrum, it tends to devolve into gender warring. Mm. And then questions such as, well, women are more emotionally intelligent than men. That's not true. And the whole back and forth becomes a pissing contest to see who's got the longest stream, who's is more yellow, who can do tricks in the air with all kinds of stupid nonsense and garbage that does nothing to improve anything whatsoever. Moves us further from the goal as opposed to getting us closer. But according to the experts, this is what I was able to discover. So there's this uh, psychologist by the name of uh, Dr. Daniel Coleman, I believe it is. I, I'm actually positive about his name. Um, no, no, it is Dr. Daniel Coleman. Um, he's been in the mental health game for quite some time. In 1995, he actually penned a book titled Emotional Intelligence, breaking down into the, um, the concept behind it. I know he's been a contributor to the New York Times um, throughout his, um, his uh, duration in the mental health field. And he actually answered some questions about a decade or so ago regarding mental health um, mm -hmm. or specifically uh, emotional intelligence. And towards the end of his interview, he answered several different questions. Uh, towards the end of his, his uh, interview, he did get asked the magic question about um, which gender has uh, higher emotional intelligence. And he um, responded, he said, well, typically I get asked that question, which means it wasn't anything new to him. Say he usually gets it asked a different way, which is, are women more emotionally intelligent than men? Because mm -hmm. according to the lore and the mythology, women are more um, emotionally mm -hmm. intelligent than men. And then he answered by saying, you have to remember that emotional intelligence, it's not one particular thing. It's a range of abilities. It's self-awareness, um, emotional self-management, empathy, and social skills. And he said, women tend to be better than men on average at empathy, particularly emotional empathy which is like sensing in the moment how the other person is feeling and also with social skills mm -hmm. and keeping things feeling good between people in a group. So they tend to be better at being that gel, this friction, whatever they tend to be, you know, better at kind of, you know, keeping everyone else in harmony with each other. Men, on the other hand, according to him, we tend to be better on average at self-confidence, particularly in groups and in managing distressing emotions. Mm. So you talk about women being emotional and giving into the emotions. Well, according to science, that's not um, that's actually not entire. That's based on research, based off of observation. That tends to be a thing. Do you have some women who are great at managing their emotions? Absolutely. Some of them are better than men on average. But when you look at the collective, what is the norm for the group? Women tend to not be horrible, but not as good as men in that regard. And so uh, the debate in the conversation in the comments earlier was about um, whether or not this is just whether or not this is how uh, men or boys are um, are taught, or if it's just better at placement or, or giving them a role and them operating in that. But um, he went on further to say, what's interesting though is if you look at leaders who are in the top ten percent, there's no difference between the men and the woman in any of those vote variables. In other words, you have a whole human being. And that's mm -hmm. what the importance about that is. If we're going to ask that question, um, are women more emotionally intelligent than men or are men more emotionally intelligent than women? The answer, I would say, is it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We both need to become the most emotional matured. We need to be able to make sure we have all those areas unlocked and become a whole human being. Mm -hmm. um, if you're great at empathy and you're great at social skills, you need to get great at self-confidence and, uh, um, and being able to assert yourself. You need to be great at expressing yourself. You need to be great at managing your emotions and vice versa. There should not be any holes in your game. And if there are, you need to take the time and the effort to be real with yourself. Get a second, third, fourth, fifth, 18th. Get a 50th opinion if necessary. 
to get real honest feedback from others, both people you know and other straight and from complete strangers, because sometimes people close to you are gonna tell you what you want to hear. Sometimes it's gonna be a person who's a perfect stranger who's gonna give it to you raw, uncut, unfiltered, because they don't know you to have that affinity for you and be soft with you like that. But when you hear something that's consistently being said, if it's something that you don't like, don't jump to offense. Manage your emotions. Hear what's being said and say, you know what? I hear a number of people saying this. Maybe this is a sign that this is a weak point I need to zero in on. I need to tweak this. I need to get stronger and better at this. Mm-hmm. And then actually put the work. So that's how we should be looking. That's the lens, the framework that we need to have about this. It's not about a pissing contest. I'm, I'm more mature than you know. I'm, I'm catching up. I'm more... <laughs> Put, put, put a hole in, that, in the head of that. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you're doing all you can to become a whole, complete person. Mm-hmm. And make sure you're helping those around you to do the same thing. So don't just be content to get the goods for yourself. Share that. Pass it around. We need more whole people. We have too many fractions moving around, and they're just cutting people there with their jagged edges. No, we need to become round. No squares in the circle. Mm-hmm. I love it. And and you you hit you hit on something very key in that response that you gave very eloquently put Bobby Drake. We got a whole other show that we need to do about that balance. Mm. That response that you gave was basically, you know, the the, the a masterclass on balance and what it looks mm. like. Yeah, that, yeah, that was dope. definitely. Uh, we appreciate everybody for coming out tonight. As you know, you guys, we don't never tell you what we're going to talk about next week, but we always, always got something great for you guys. Remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. This is a platform that is dope. If you feel like you have any dusty uh, dudes that need to elevate, bring them over here. Um, And yeah, send send them them because, you know, a lot of dusty dudes feel like they got ego. So we want them to jump on here and, um, you know, rustle up their little uh, shirts a little bit and tuck them up, you know. Uh, we don't mind doing that for y'all. So just bring them over here. We'll do the rest. Uh, also, if you have any ratchet women that's over here, just send them over here so we can they can understand that there is a platform out here to uh, groom them and make them understand that their ratchetness is a phase that is going to phase out and leave them somewhere that they don't want to be left. And uh, so basically, this platform is to elevate both sides of the, the scale. Um, yeah. on the men's side and the women's side. That's what we do. Um, it's just our job as a community and community leaders to do so. Um, so we love what uh, you guys are bringing to the table as far as telling everybody and sharing this information. We love the feedback that we're getting. We also have uh, Dear Men uh, that we will do next week. We'll add that in. We were supposed to uh, continue that from the first episode we told you guys about but we uh implied it back in so dare men uh is a place where you can uh send in your emails uh send in your emails about anything you want us to discuss uh any issues or situation that you had just like the question of the day that came in directly off of the email uh send it to us so we could post it here anonymously and then you could get your feedback and uh understand which direction or uh, way you're supposed to choose. Um, so their email, I mean, their men, the email for that is manversations2020, just like the platform, at gmail.com. So send us all your emails or whatever you have on your chest, any situations, uh, just send it to us. We're we'll dissect it and give you the best answer possible for whatever you're going through. Um, with that being said, We'll see you guys next week. Make sure y'all be safe. Also, it's been a crazy week. Next week will be a very crazy week. It's next week Easter, right? It's Easter Sunday. I'm such a um, I think it might be Easter Sunday. Yes. Uh, Bible. So, yeah, so they, make they sure talking about it like it. Yeah, so make sure you guys are, are, are safe out there. Keep the family safe. Because every time we have holidays, we have a bunch of crazy people with their driving skills, driving reckless. So we want to make sure you guys make it here with us after Easter Sunday evening, come chop it up with us as we have a phenomenal, phenomenal show for you guys tonight. So with that being said, we appreciate y'all and we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Shout out to, shout out to the audience, yo. Y'all great. Yay.
Well, on the album, we do things like uh, songs that are a little, what we call, sexy. You can see from the title, it's more of a love album. Mm-hmm. 